The following is a presentation of iRacing.com Motorsport Simulations on LSR TV, the voice of sim racing. Tonight from Bristol, Tennessee, LSR TV, as always, happy to say good evening, Sim Racing fans, and welcome to the Championship Esports Association's 2017 Cars Esport Tour on LSR TV and iRacing Live. Happy to be with you tonight from the last great Coliseum for the Thunder Valley 200, the fourth race on this 2017 campaign. The night getting set to get kicked off with late model stocks on track as we welcome you topside into our LSR TV broadcast booth. As always, Evan Pasoko, Austin Coop, James Pike topside with you downstairs pushing buttons. The lovely and talented Cisco Scarabuza bringing us to you here tonight live on iRacing Live and also over on Facebook Live. Coop, this is such a fun racetrack. It's Bristol, baby. It's completely different of an animal compared to Thompson, completely different compared to Kentucky, where we will be for the next race on the calendar year. And the big difference is banking, a lot of it. Oh, yeah, I uh, actually ran in the car with uh, uh, Kyle Barnes uh, earlier today just for fun and noticed that this track is a completely different beast in these cars than car any other car with uh, the Kyle late, Barnes. Uh, super late models. It's more like your your bigger uh, stock cars, but with the late models, these things like to bottom out in the corners if you don't have this thing set up just right. You're going to have these guys at about 10 inches on the front springs, which is an insane amount here, but these cars just sit so low. So really expect that these guys are going to be um, looking for two different kinds of uh, setups, either low or high groove. Uh, we're going to probably see a little bit of both from all drivers around. So really expect that to really come into fruition for a lot of these drivers, but really looking to see how these uh, late models do because it's going to be a really difficult challenge to get through the, uh, through the 100 laps just because of the banking, like you said. And that 100 lap number is somewhat interesting because it's on the shorter end of the spectrum when we talk about, uh, you know, how this season looks overall. But let's talk about what's happened through the opening three weeks. Uh, we've gone through New Smyrna, the Bullring at Las Vegas, and then Thompson most recently two weeks ago. And into tonight in the late model stocks, it is Matt Cucker at the top of the championship by a mere two points. Jeremy Adams, who is right there alongside him. Second, those are the only two drivers who have completed 400 laps so far to this point. Uh, Jody Green, Brad Carpenter, Adam Rigo, names inside of the top five at late model stock points. Naslin Young, Leverault, Bunden, and Poff, the top 10 coming into tonight. Yeah, and something that I really was uh, thinking about before the race tonight is can anyone really top these three drivers, Jeremy Adams, Christian Peterson, and Matt Cucker? They're the only three drivers that have won this season in both of the divisions, uh, both the late model stock and the uh, super late models. And I think this is going to be the racetrack that really actually breaks that. But they had to really contend with all the three of them. They worked together really well. Uh, during the during the preparation period before these races and you you've got to think to yourself if you're a driver outside looking in against these three guys if you've got to try something different or you've got to figure a way out to get to the front quick and really maintain your tires uh, that's the biggest thing in this series is you don't get tires it's almost uh, it's like the real deal in uh, these uh, divisions you have to really conserve your tires and as we go into, again, the first race of two on tonight's coverage, once we finish 100 laps so with the late model stocks, we'll do it all over again, 100 more in the super late models a little bit later on. We'll use that as an opportunity when that time comes to talk about your SLM championship points and such. But cash on the line every single time we drop the green flag. And with that being said, practice and qualifying have drawn to a close. Let's go tracks out and take a look at your LSR TV starting grid for race 
number four. Late model stock pole gonna go to Scott Naslin. He will bring us to the green flag tonight and he will be accompanied on the front row by the number 61 DIYSim.com entry of James Finn. Matt Cocker, championship leader, gonna be joined by Jeremy Adams. They make up row number two starting in third and fourth respectively. And another name we mentioned up in the points, the 17 of Adam Rigo starts tonight in fifth. Robbie Bundy in that Pennzoil machine. He'll start in the sixth position with Kyle Everalt starting in the seventh position as the number seven. Brad Carpenter will start eighth with Jody Green right behind him in ninth. Christian Peterson, he'll start 10th. Kyle Young starts 11th. Taylor Kaufman will start 12th. And Kyle Barnes will make his first appearance of the season as the admin in 13th position. And that's a look top to bottom at your LSR TV starting grid. I feel good to get set to roll in just a moment as we head off now. Let's take this opportunity to talk about this Bristol Motor Speedway. The facts are that it is a .533 mile racetrack with Banky down at 26 degrees at the inside and 30 degrees at the outside. But I think that it's safe to say James Bristol is so much more than just statistics. It's a driving style and it's an attitude, I think, more than anything else. And you look at so many of the greats that have won here, the Allisons, the Waltrips, the Earnhardts. You just have to find a way to get up on the wheel and get it done. Speed is only so important. How you drive the car is the most important thing here tonight. Something that we noted last week when we saw it happen is that if there are 40 laps of uninterrupted action, there will be a competition caution. That is something to note uh, as you take a look at field size of 13 cars total. Uh, so that may be a factor in this one. Again, 100 laps, a little bit shorter distance wise, lap wise, uh, when it comes to some of the races we've seen this season uh, towards the 150s and the 200s. But it is going to be plenty of action tonight. Just a little bit over 53 miles between the drop of the green and the checkered flag. So pace car going to duck down to the way this time. As always, we're so happy that you're spending your evening with us on LSR TV and iRacing Live. We'll see what the number 33 Scott Naslin can do. He's had a fast car all week long qualified on pole second of best to warm up earlier tonight he's going to try to get out in front and avoid all the chaos behind him pace car ducks down and away a baron connected on green flag flies we're underway from bristol yeah good start look at the inside looks like the 69 of matt cucker wanted to go there wanted to try and pass him on the start which is something you can do once you get past that start finish line but immediately you can see Naslin go to the top no searching for him he knows exactly where he wants to go and he's going to have james finn in tow with him and it looks like jeremy adams he's going to get right there in that third position sneak in a position over cucker and here they go they're going to sit a little bit single filed out here in turns three and four you still have some side-by-side -side action inside of the top five, and it is that 17 at least trying to challenge Rigo. Take a look to the inside of Cocker. Not going to happen, though. Cocker using the outside of the racetrack. That little bit extra gives a huge run off of the corners, and N69 going to be able to defend P4 somewhat easily. Easy move there from Matt Coker. Now it's on to Adam Rigo, Jody Green, and Kyle Leverall. Those three are really your first kind of side-by-side -side battle, or at least it was until they decided to sort themselves out. So now you have to go back to Christian Peterson, Brad Carpenter, Robbie Bundon. They're all battling hard at the back of the field, but it's nicely strung itself out for the most part, save for James Finn, who's looking underneath Jeremy Adams as they come out of turn two. Battle a little bit further forward, and Jeremy Adams gets that spot indeed up to the fence. And a little bit of a kiss that time, but he does get the spot. It was interesting because Finn got loose a couple of laps ago, held on to it, but it kind of walked him down the racetrack. That's how that 89 ended up on his outside, and uh, outside of the racetrack appears to be the place to be, and that's how Adams made the move. So jump the 89 up from starting fourth into P2, picking up two spots already so far in this race. Taking a scroll through the field, looks like almost everybody else top to bottom for the moment. It agrees with each other, single file, lap seven. Yeah, it looks like Robbie Bundon went from six to the very tail end of the field, so we'll have to keep our eye on him. Maybe the setup's not agreeing with him at the moment, but with the tra way this track works out, you can have a long run setup really propel you forward. And that's what I'm thinking about that 61 of James Finn. He's under fire on the bottom side from these guys. Looks like the number 69 of Matt Cucker. He's going to be on the inside in the 17 of Matt Rigo, or Adam Rigo. He's going to try and get by him on the inside as well. And uh, he's pro they're probably going to get it done. It's the shortest way around this track. But if you're the 61 of James Finn, it was loose. And we saw that. His car got real loose out of the corner. And this track is known for getting tighter as the run goes on. So we're only on the lap 10, about 10% of the way through this race. you got to think that that 61 may have a long run car. And so only time will tell. 
He is losing positions pretty quickly, so he's either gonna ha he's really got banking on it, or he's really losing something on the car right now. And it's interesting because when he got loose and ended up losing uh, that position, when he was where he started this race up in second spot, he got really loose, and it's not like he locked up the tires or anything. He didn't hit the fence, but. 61 definitely nowhere near as quick as it was off for the start of this race if you remember when he started second he challenged for the race lead in fact uh, he obviously your pole sitter scott Naslin, and then the driver who started in third matt cocker were all over each other in one and two for the first time but uh the 61 is not having a fun time out there falling all the way down to p6 now and continuing it looks like to try to find the handle on that car I think now that we've settled into this green flag run a little bit, we're starting to see what kind of setups these cars really have as we have got a liberal down into the inside retaining wall, got loose off of turn four, spins the car. We'll see if it brings down a yellow flag. Nothing yet, but trouble for the seven machine. And there it is. First yellow flag of the evening. Caution flag does come from the tower. The seven was around on the front straightaway, so we'll check things up at lap number 14. Taking a look in just a moment on your LSR TV replay, and it was a bobble in the center of quarter number four, it looked like, and he tried to step it up the hill. The problem is, though, you can get real tight on the fence regardless, so uh, he had to obviously snap that car back to the left and uh, it, it just didn't work out. He, he tried to get it back under control in it. A li little bit of a lazy spin to the inside of it, kind of like a place like Dover. There's not a lot of real estate between the racing surface and the inside of fence on the straight scoop. And uh, despite the fact that he locked it up pretty quickly, uh, he does get some pretty good damage in that one. Yeah, it was a really interesting spin. It, you could definitely see the wobble in turns, uh, turn four. And then once it's, uh, we see it in the, in the in the cup cars and the Xfinity cars that once you lose it off of turn four, you typically do go for that long ride down the front straightaway, and that's exactly what happened. I mean, he locked it down, tried to do everything he could, but once you start that slide, it's really difficult to to stop that car from hitting the inside wall. The banking on the front straightaway will send you right there. So he's got some decent front end and some really good uh well really good front end and some decent back and damage so he'll definitely come down pit road he can't take tires take fuel make an adjustment and fix that damage as much as he wants to it looks like he's going to hit the cone he's going to get in a penalty for that actually uh so uh, a little bit of insult to injury for that number seven right now as he's coming down pit road to get that repaired yeah, and this is uh, a little bit of a larger track as far as, you know, you know how long these pace laps take. We've seen a couple of races uh, this season where pace laps are nearly 30 seconds. 48 seconds means there's a little bit more time for drivers to come down, get damage fixed. But uh, when, when you come down to the pit lane and you're forced to do pit road speed at 35 miles an hour, you don't really get a lot of time in the box to allow that car to get fixed up. So you get damage. You're, for all intent and purposes, really stuck with it for the course of the race. I think it goes back to something that we've said over the past few weeks is that it's not necessarily sheet metal damage and aerodynamic affecting damage that's the biggest concern for a lot of these drivers. It's suspension damage. And if you hit the walls at any short track in a certain way, you can bend the toe, screw up with your rocker arms, and just throw the entire suspension out of whack and make it really, really difficult to get these cars to turn, especially through the center of the corner. And that, I think, is the biggest issue that Kyle Everall will have to deal with here going forward. You leave the pit lane, it'll mean that we'll have all 13 cars who started this race still on the lead lap for this restart. So Scott Naslin got a good jump the first time, but that uh, challenge came from that number three position. Keep it down to 60 down to Matt Cucker as they send it back off to quarter number one. Green flag flies, we'll go back underway. A better advantage for the 33 this time down to one. Can the 89 do something? Top side though, it's been the preferred lane. Bobbles into the corner as these guys full throttle for the first time through one and two. Naslin gonna get the race lead. Adams remains P2 and Cocker stays in third. Yeah, you gotta imagine that Naslin hasn't really been working the car that much a whole lot this race as he's been leading and not having a huge challenge. Jeremy Adams was, was catching him towards the end of that run, but gotta think that maybe he's got something still in the wheel right now as a 33 getting about another car length lead looks like the 89 may have just touched the wall in the exit of four starting a single file out here the top five uh single file and then you have kyle young and company they're still side by side right out of the top five uh for a sixth seventh eighth ninth and you could put uh Craig carpenter probably in there too with kyle barnes as well 
Like a two by two they go. It's the 30 at Taylor Kaufman on the inside. Trying to find a spawn in line. Opportunity there behind the 93, but does not want to get in line quite yet. Continues to challenge on the low side. You see off of the corner, though, that's where you struggle to get the speed. The outside gets so much momentum. But 93 has bounced off the fence two, three times in a row now, continuing to struggle for sixth and seventh. I think more important to notice that Jeremy Adams absolutely destroyed the wall in turns one and two, two laps ago, and got significant damage to the right side of that number 89. He was in second or third when he hit the wall, already back to sixth and falling. I have to imagine that that car will be hurting for the rest of the race. And the contact that we were talking about, uh, excluding that 89, is just guys getting into the corner, drifting up a little bit high and more or less kissing the fence. The 89 either thought he was getting loose or something, but tried to overcorrect, and that car snapped up into the wall. And that's why you see such heavy damage. It cost him five positions now as he falls to sixth on the racetrack. And again, as we were just talking about under the yellow, question is now, does that damage affect how that race car handles? It was a pretty good piece of contact directed on the right front of that machine. If he is struggling, he's going to have to deal with Jody Green next. The 13 runs behind the 89 in the number seven spot on track right now. And is taking a look to the inside. In front of them, though, side by side, inside of the top five, Taylor Kaufman still on the inside picking up a spot from Rigo. He is going to slot in right there. Something to really note about these cars is the battle for the lead is starting to heat up as well as the 69. He's going to almost hit him right there in the corner. Almost get that 33. He's actually going to look on the inside right here. He's going to try and get the position right here, right now. Lap 29. Going to go on the inside. And he's going to be heads up. He's actually going to look like he's going to have the advantage as really as that car really hooked up on the bottom. And he's going to probably be able to clear him right here out of the four as Naslin continues to do the outside line. New leader, 69 of Matt Cucker. That machine just hooked up, center off for the quarter, and Cucker made it look easy. And for that first stint, being so favorable to the outside line of the racetrack, the inside, a very viable passing option. Look at this 30 of Taylor Kaufman. We picked up this Chevrolet off of the restart back at about sixth or seventh. Has not gone up in line for more than two laps in a row, and it's knocking on the door in a battle for second position. Side by side for P2. Naslin looks like he's continuing to struggle as more laps to get on those tires, and the 30 get to pass him on the inside. Drops the 33 to third, lowest he's been all night long. And it looks like there might be just the tiniest hint of damage on the right front on that 33 car of Scott Niles, and I wonder if that might have something to do with why he's dropping back. But I think we also have to give oh. a call to, never mind, we're gonna talk about Scott Naslin losing the car in turn two, yellow flag out for the second time tonight. And that started very similar to what we saw happen, uh, you know, just off of this restart a little bit ago uh, with Jeremy Adams, and that is getting loose into the corner. The difference for this one, though, is Naslin didn't overcorrect it back up the hill. That 33 just broadly began to spun, and as it drifted down the hill, there was nowhere for Kyle Everall to go. Talk about having a bad night. The 7 involved in another one. Yeah, what a misfortune for that seven. He just got another lap down. Was trying to sit out and try and get that second caution, because uh, we're gonna we were gonna at least have two cautions no matter what because of those competition cautions that do happen. Uh, so he was already a lap down, trying to just settle and maybe wait uh, wait about 35 more laps or so to get that, and then uh, really just wrong place, wrong time for that seven car. Uh, it's not what you're looking for if you're him. And if you're Scott Nansel, and that car just kicked out. Something with the setup after this long run is just not agreeing with it. We saw him lose a few positions, had the pole, and it's really a... Uh, I just don't think the car was really hooked up to run the top at uh, about 35 laps into this race. You got some drivers, James, dealing with tight race cars. You got some drivers dealing with loose race cars because in that incident there, Naslin didn't go into the corner and the car didn't snap around on him. It just lost traction in the back end and just spun all the way through the corner before it eventually ran out of momentum and drifted down the hill. So you've got a lot going on right now for these guys behind the wheel. I think it's a little bit of that. It's a little bit of differing setups between these drivers. And I think it also depends on how hard some of these drivers have pushed in the opening laps and I noticed uh, maybe about 10 laps before Naslin went around 
that he started to run up the track, even on the high side, a little bit more than I think he would normally like, and just sort of drifted up a little bit closer to that wall more often than not. Uh, and it kept on happening and happening, and I wondered if something like that might happen, if he might clip the wall, and that might eventually affect him. And uh, so all of that seems to have come true as Naslin goes around. Take a look to see if the lights go out on top of the pace car at this time. Conquer going to have an opportunity to lead us to the green flag for the first time tonight. They do not. So at least two more times around uh, before we do collect the green flag. Again, as noted a little bit earlier on in this one, the competition caution policy is 40 laps of uninterrupted green flag action. So if we go green before uh, lap number uh, 40, uh, we would have been in a position where we could have gone to lap 80. However, there are no competition cautions in the final 25 laps of these races. So if we were to go 40 laps from where we are now, we'd be at 24 laps to go. So competition cautions are off the table for the rest of this race. Yeah, and I think someone you got to really look at right now is it is getting time to realize that if the caution is going to come out, it's going to be from contact or another driver spinning out, is the fact that Taylor Kaufman is coming up the field quickly from 12th to second right now. It's going to start on the outside of Matt Cucker, who did a really good job to get that lead. He wanted it really early, tried to pass at the very beginning of the race. I uh, thought better of it because uh, it actually has helped him uh, get there now. But the top three is uh, quite strong right now. Cutker, Kaufman, Rigo. These guys have been up there or have driven themselves up here. It's going to be an interesting start here. The pace car going to give the field over to the 69 of Cutker. He's been very aggressive, challenging on the inside, but he's been doing it for row number two. He will be the first driver to come at a quarter number four. Looking for the green flung the flag stand. Green flag flies. We go back underway. 38 laps complete from Bristol. He's going to get the advantage for the race leader. It'll be Cucker 1 and Kaufman 2 through quarters 1 and 2 but here comes the 30. Big fan of the inside of the racetrack and challenging for the race lead. You've got drivers all over the place it seems like trying to go side by side. You saw Kaufman try and make it stick on the bottom underneath Cooker. Not quite enough car to make that happen though and now they're starting to sort themselves out at least amongst the front four. Adam Rigo's got firm control of third as does Jody Green in fourth and Naslin after spinning is now trying to fight his way back through the field to become the first car one lap down and then just a whole host of cars behind him running side by side. He had that side-by-side -side battle for third that continued on between the 70 to Rigo, the 30 to Green, and in the middle of two fights, the 60 to James Finn. Behind him, the 15 and the 93. Kyle Barnes going to win that battle. He'll go top to bottom and get a couple of spots. There goes the 17. Rigo into the fence and in front of traffic and big mess in turn three. Oh, wow. That's a large mess right there to turn number four and barely clip the 15 right there. But Rigo just caught the outside and the 61 had nowhere to go. And that caught all of those. I think it's only going to be three cars involved with this in this one with heavy damage. I think maybe this 87 is going to get a little bit and Scott Naslin is going to get a little bit more. Um, but yeah, four drivers with a lot, a lot of damage. I think that's going to end the 17's night along with uh, maybe one or two other drivers are going to have some damage damage here uh, that's a big one off the turn too and Rigo wasn't somebody James that we were looking at that was having problems the 17 was doing pretty good up until that moment just got a little bit high in the corner and rode all the way up against that fence through and I told you that that wall kind of jumps out at you in four well same thing happens in turn two and it was just bad timing because that 15 as I was talking about had just made that sweeping move from the top to the inside and kind of put him in a three wide scenario so the 17 spins down the racetrack clips both the 61 and the 15 and that makes that incident that much bigger. I think in comparison to Leverall's crash and what Scott Naslin did, that was more a byproduct of just racing than anybody, you know, making some form of metal mistake. That that happens when you get cars this close at Bristol. There's just nowhere to go sometimes, especially off corner exit. If someone gets loose like that and you get someone coming off the top and they clip somebody on the bottom and they both kind of fan across to kind of clean out and create a blockade in the middle of the track, there's just not much you can do if you're coming behind it. 
This caution flag may br bridge us either right up to or just a little bit shy of the halfway point in this race. Bristol is not a long racetrack as far as how long it's going to take to knock out the 100 laps uh, in this late model stock event. But a handful of cautions here early on have slowed the pace down just a little bit. We have had a handful of drivers fall off for the lead lap. Kyle Everalt involved in the opening accident and then, well, he was the opening accident, should say, but then was involved uh, in a secondary accident. Uh, the seven machine is heavily damaged on pit road he has fallen to eight laps down uh, we also have james finata rigo on the pit lane uh, with some pretty substantial damage they run in 11th and 12th position and they're going to fall now two laps down naslin down a lap uh, robbie bundon down a lap so now you're starting to see that attrition come into play yeah, seeing a lot of these guys out of the race or at least trying to get their cars repaired this early we're almost halfway it's a it's kind of a tough build to swallow when you still have half a race to go and you're uh, you're down a pit road just trying to salvage everything you've got, uh, what left with the car, and even if it wasn't your fault that you, the accident happened, it's still something you've got to deal with and got to hope that you can get uh, the damage as quick, uh, fixed as quickly as possible. For those guys out there, there's only eight of them out there on uh, the lead lap right now, and some of them are, are getting damage repair. I think the 15 is the only one on the lead lap right now trying to get uh, damage repair, which it was uh, just a little bit of right, uh, left front and a little bit of rear damage, but those guys out there, they're doubling up right now. They've still got really clean cars for the most part. I think maybe the 87 of uh, Robbie Bundon, uh, he's still on the off lap. He's got lots of damage, but everyone else, they're pretty clean out there. If you got a car that's still in one piece, you're basically the top eight who right now are scored on the lead lap. Matt Cocker, though, leading this race. He'll bring us to right about the halfway point. He's got to win in these late model stocks already this year. Uh, there's a lot of drivers behind them, though. Coffin Green, Young Carpenter and company who are still looking for their first. 69 going to be in control once again and a good jump out of the restart box. We go back underway. 53 laps to go from Bristol, just as it was the last time. Top two, single file out in the center of the quarter with a big run for Kaufman to the inside. Kaufman got a really good drive off of turn two and it might be enough to come up in front of Coco who pulls the crossover down the front straight away to try and make it happen. They might bump touch. No, nothing in the corner yet, but it's hard side by side racing for the lead as they come into turn three. The 69 trying to fight on the inside. It's where Coffin passed it up, but just not enough speed off for the corner. And Taylor Kaufman, new race leader, lap number 50. Beautifully executed off of the restart. He'll drop Matt Cocker back into P2. Behind them, Kyle Young in third. Jody Green in fourth. And Kyle Barnes watching the fight in front of him from fifth. Yeah, look at that 15 back in the top five after having that issue. And those guys in front of him side by side trying to negotiate who's going to get that position. But looks like the 13 is really wanting to be at the top of the racetrack right now and is now uh, having to be squeezed towards the top. And I believe he's going to be crossed. Look at the 15 right there crossing between both of them. Get them both with one foul swoop right there. And he's going to be in third at the start or finish line. And I think he's going to get them both here at a turns number four. A move he made before he got collected in an accident. That time it works. He gets the spot at the line. But an Andy 3 a Young not going to give things up. They'll cross each other up. Now at a quarter number two, a drag race. Down the back straightaway. Look for the outside, though, to get the run. Coming at a quarter number four. That's what the 15 is banking on. And it's going to give Kyle Barnes P3. So Barnes moves up to P3. Now he'll set his sights on Coker. Maybe most important to note, though, is that Kaufman is starting to drive away from Coker. And he isn't necessarily doing it up on the top side like we saw Scott Naslin do in the early part of this race. Kaufman's driving more of a sort of central groove through the corners, maybe a little bit towards the apron there. But he's not riding the wall in the same way, and he's making it work. He's already jumped out to a four-tenths of a second lead here on lap 56. And he almost exits the corner where he enters the corner. He doesn't go up to the extreme outside or to the extreme inside. Cocker's digging a little bit more from second, and he closed the gap a little bit more that time. The 69 making a lot higher of an entrance into the corner, sweeping low off of the turn, and it's allowed him to close in within a couple of car lengths for the race lead. Just past, though, the halfway point here tonight for the Bristol Motor Speedway. Let's take this opportunity to look at our iRacing. The midway race break brought to you by iRacing. Battle for the race lead. Going to go on amongst these two in contact. Kaufman going to get clipped by Cocker. And Cocker's going to be the one that spins around. 
Oh no, and that's not that is gonna bring the caution out from the tower once again. Single car spin. Cucker looks like he was trying to give uh, the 30 room to gather it up, and he did, but in doing so, I think he got too hard on the brakes and dug that nose in and uh, bottomed out the car whenever it started to slow down. And uh, that car had nowhere to go, no damage on it, but wow, that was a crazy battle. Just I think slung it in there just a little too hard, and then once the contact started, it was on from there. And we noted again that that 30 was running the middle lane, James. He probably just went into the corner like he normally would have, and it squeezed the 69 a little bit. The 69 was, as we noted, trying to enter the corner a little bit higher, so their paths just kind of intertwined into the turn, and they got together. I was all but certain that that 30 accompaniment was going to be going around. He was about 45 degrees to the inside fence. A fantastic save on his part. Cucker not is lucky, though. Kaufman, I guess, took some notes from what Ryan Newman did in qualifying for the All-Star Race last weekend, because if you've got some banking, you can turn it back to the right a little bit and save your car. That's exactly what he did. But I think Coker just caught the apron, and that's what kind of finished off the spin. He didn't really have the room on the concrete to save his car the way that Kaufman did. So I think that's why Kaufman's up here in the lead, and Coker's going to have to drive his way through the field a little bit to get back to P1. Did be a little bit less excitement under the caution flag. So now let's take a look at that midway race break that's brought to you by iRacing, the leading online racing simulation developed from the beginning as a centralized racing and competition service. iRacing organizes, hosts, and officiates races on virtual tracks all around the world. And in a fast-paced world of esports, iRacing is a one-stop shop for online racing with officially sanctioned series by NASCAR, IndyCar, IMSA, World of Outlaws, and many more. We're 60 laps in tonight from Bristol and Taylor Kaufman who started in 12th is our race leader he's been charging through and he got the lead on that last hit Kyle Barnes from the back of the pack in 13th rides in second and Kyle Young who started in 11th runs in third the guys who started in the back three are the top three on track right now Jody Green's having a good night plus five for the driver who started in ninth running in fourth and Matt Cucker falls to fifth in all of that yeah, Brad Carpenter started eighth. He's up two positions in six, and all the rest of these drivers are one or more laps down. Christian Peterson being one lap down. Robbie Bundon being six laps down. Kyle Leverall, he's still charging away out there in ninth place. And then Jeremy Adams, he's in that tenth position, 14 laps down. Final three cars in the running order are Scott Naslin, James Finn, and Adam Rigo, who have been caught up in incidents early on in this event. They run 11th, 12th, and 13th at the moment. Look top to bottom at your iRacing Midway Race Break. For more information on the wide variety of sim racing possibilities online, you can go to iRacing.com and sign up today. For a limited time, make sure you go to iRacing.com forward slash World of Outlaws. You can take advantage of some exclusive promo codes. You can get yourself a one-year iRacing membership for over 50% off. Or if you just want to give iRacing a try, how about a three-month membership for less than $5? That's valid through the end of 2017 the only way to get it is to be a new iRacing member and to go to iRacing.com forward slash world of outlaws so inside of 40 laps to go first time Taylor Kaufman is going to bring us to the green flag tonight again the top three on track started as the back three impressive drives for Kaufman Barnes and Young we're going to take the battle for the race lead into turn number one with 37 laps to go pace car off the way the 30 holds him back a slow exit but he's on the right foot and the green flag is back in the air yeah good start by the front two and then they're side by side for it looks like third place but you can't get your eyes off that 15 the yellow 15 he's looking to really make it interesting that car's really been hooked up on the very bottom of the track and if you're gonna pass anybody that's really where you want to be and uh, so look at that 15 he's actually gonna slide back just a little bit so it's like the 13 of jody green he's also going to be looking to get around the outside of the 93 that's where he likes his car to be right there in the out and he's going to be able to get it right there he's going to clear the 93 of Kyle young who's still under fire by those guys behind him he's going to put a really good defensive move right there going in the corner he's going to keep that position out of the gun two by two behind him 
It looked like Carpenter wanted to go to the inside of the 93, try to cross him up, but at the last minute, Cocker stuck a nose in there, and the 31 kind of got boxed out on the outside of the racetrack. They'll continue for fifth, and Cocker with a huge dive into the corner. 69 going to jump back up to fifth. It's where he was just off of the restart. Meanwhile, one, two, three, four, bumper to bumper up at the front of the field. Kaufman going to have to get ready a battle soon to be on his hands as Barnes looks to the inside of the racetrack, trying to find some speed anywhere he can. Because Barnes has closed in ever so slightly on the rear bumper of Kaufman. It hasn't been a lot, but it's been enough to put the driver of the number 30 machine under pressure as they go into the corner. And I wonder if we'll see any more issues with that line that he runs, or if he decides to switch it up over the course of the run. There goes Barnes, tried to get underneath him, now does have a car length underneath him. And they're side by side coming out of turn four for the race lead, but he can't hang on. He'll slide back up into his main group, but for how long will they put up with that? Here comes Jody Green to the inside side of Kyle Barnes now looking for second. And a move from the 13 to go to the inside might cost him a spot because his spot in line up top's no longer there. Here comes Matt Cocker finding some speed at 30 laps to go on the outside of Jody Green to jump back up to third. Now a sweeping move to the inside. Side by side for second. Cocker trying to get back in the conversation. Not enough bite that time. The 15 sticks with him. Yeah, he got that move able to be done because Barnes got really loose on the outside of turn number two and almost lost the thing, and he's able to gather it up. And since he was able to gather it up, he'll actually be able to keep that position. But it looks like Cucker got a really good drive off of four, and I think Barnes might have to do, have a different approach. Looks like a lot of contact right back there with the 31 of Brad Carpenter. He's in the outside wall. Looks like contact between him and the 13 of Jody Green uh, ensued with that, and the 23 is going to get by both of them, it looks like, right here. And uh, the battle for third or second is not done yet with the 69 and the 15. Yeah, the 31 and the 13 got together on the front straightaway. Brad Carpenter uh, not happy on the radio, but I think a, a look at the replay would tell him that he's the one that got into the defense and uh, kind of bounced him off into Jody Green. Just keep an eye on those two, though. If they are to get back together, it would be for fifth and sixth. Battle for the race lead, though. Kyle Barnes, and he's got it. What a move. Slide job off the corner, right up and on the nose of the 30 of Taylor Kaufman. And Barnes leads this race for the first time at 25 to go. Kaufman did not get the drive he wanted a few laps ago off of turn four, and that's what gave Barnes the foothold coming down the front straightaway to set up that move in one and two to get the race lead. So have to watch your corner exit here, especially as these tires start to wear out. When you get down towards the end of this race, you're not necessarily working with the rubber and the grip that you had earlier on. You have to be more careful with the throttle to make sure that you get the right drive out of turns two and four here and back onto these straightaways. The throw of the 15s into the fence, though. Barnes kissed the wall that time at a four. Cucker dived to the inside. That was just after he and Kaufman had made contact. And it was the 30 machine just a handful of laps ago who came charging up on everybody else. And now he's the one falling backwards to fourth. Only time tonight that he's actually been going to backwards. And Kyle Barnes started this race 13th out of 13 cars. He needs to hold on for 21 more laps, but here comes the 23 on the inside of the racetrack. Lap machine may be a factor in this. As Cucker tries to get around the 15, we'll see what kind of a factor Peterson is on the bottom, though. And it looks like it might help out the 15 if he can clear him before the 69 does. We'll find out. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised that the 23 is trying to unlap himself right here. Uh, Christian Peterson, he's a smart driver out there, but at the same time, he's uh, he's so smart where he realizes how valuable that lead lap status would be if he could get it as soon as possible because uh, no caution is going to end uh, or is going to come out from this point on. It's racing until the end or unless a car goes around. And it uh, looks like the 23 may start to fade just a little bit, but look at the lead. The 69's on the inside right here. It's going to be really difficult to pass that 15 right now. He's got the outside really hooked up, and he's got the inside hooked up, but they're almost heads up there at the line, and it's still side by side. And the 69 of Cucker, he's going to have the advantage going into three. I think the key for the 69 is he has to pitch the 15 up. He's got to push him up the hill because, as we saw with Peterson, 
you just can't get the speed if you enter low and exit low. You gotta find something to help that arc get a corner to be able to get the run off the corner that you would need. So they go side by side for the race leader once again. 16 laps to go this next time by and they are neck and neck advantage that time though to Matt Cucker and to be fair he doesn't have to clear the 15 he just has to have that nose on him when it comes down to it but he's got the advantage now looking to clear in three and four caution to fly will fly I saw it right out of the back of my screen. Brad Carpenter went around on the front straightaway. I can't tell if he made contact with anything. No, he just got loose off the replay there that you'll see momentarily and got into the back of Kyle Young a little bit. Brad Carpenter loses it out of the corner, and now we'll have a little, maybe about a 10-lap dash or so to the checkered flag. Pretty big damage that Kyle Young is going to get from that one. Got hooked in the right rear, and pancake the front straightaway fence after uh, being scored in the fourth position so uh, the 93 may have to really scrap off for this ensuing restart to be able to maintain that top five running position but that was huge for Matt Cucker and to be fair the 69 was all but clear on Barnes so I don't think it was a case where you know the 69 just had a couple of inches on him and he's going to get a free spot I think that Cucker was going to get that position but now he'll have an opportunity to bring the field to the green flag and trying to run off it away although really all this race and especially late well the race leaders get the good run out of four and one and two there's always been somebody there we really haven't seen a race leader get clear of all the chaos yeah it's almost like you're you're at the you're the leader you're at a disadvantage uh it's like everyone's able to catch you a little bit quicker and it you would normally think that at a, at a speedway you get a little bit of draft you'd be able to do that and i i'd say that it's a, maybe a little bit of a factor but with the fact that they're going side by side uh, i'd say maybe the leader is using uh their tires up a little bit more than the driver behind them uh sometimes with short track racing as well if you're the only one up there there's no one to really chase uh and everyone's chasing you they have a target uh whereas you're at the front you can only see pavement out the front windshield or a lap car uh, so that could also be so uh, it's gonna be a, a quite quite the uh, quite the exciting ten, last 10 laps of this one is I bet we'll get about two laps more of caution flag uh, the caution flag laps and then we'll get racing again for about a 10 lap shootout but I think between those top two maybe Taylor Kaufman can get back in its, its thing uh, between those three right now, they're very strong, and I'd say you'd throw Kyle Young back in there, but he's got damage on that right front, so we don't know the extent of what that car can do at the moment. I think the biggest thing to note is that as we get set to come to this restart, that if a caution is to come out inside of the final five laps of this race, this race will be done. We will not have an opportunity to go back into green flag racing condition. So, whether we take the green with 10 laps to go, whether we take it with not a rate, depending on when those lights go out on top of the pace car, once we get to five to go, that is the point of no return. So it does open up a small window, James, for a quick caution at a late race restart where maybe two or three to go. But I honestly think you got to expect it for that 69 machine uh, to have to go about four or five laps inside of that five lap to go window and maybe bank on a yellow. I feel like that's the most likely scenario here. I wouldn't be surprised if we had a yellow within the patented Evan Pasoko yellow window TM of five laps because these guys have just been going so hard for the past 10 to 15. That's where all this contact has come from and all the wrecks have come from either drivers overdriving corner exit like Carpenter did or getting into it and spinning out like Coker and Coffin did. One of the two seems likely to happen. I guess the question if you're trying to play this out in Vegas is which one would you bet on happening first? Devin Driver is going to have an opportunity to battle for it. Do we get old 10 laps or 80 to green flag action? Pace car off and away for what could be the final time tonight. Matt Cocker, championship leader, looking for win number two with a late model socks. Green flag flies. 90 laps complete and 10 laps to go, and it's a good jump. Single file, one, two, into the corner. Barnes powering on the inside of the racetrack with a fantastic run at a two unbelievable start that the 15 had and you would say that the 69 had the advantage but he doesn't right now look at this oh! he's gonna squeeze him up on the outside fence bars to the inside fence it's gonna be the end of the night for the 15 as he completely smacks the inside just pushed up a little too much out of turns number four and took himself out well you can't say that he wasn't trying hard enough that was a fantastic run from the center one and two to the inside kept it there and 
thought about maybe getting clear of the 60 down and they just got a little bit too tight off for the corner they bounced off each other the 60 down did a good job of keeping it out of the fence but it was just a little bit too much for Barnes after his back end kind of slid out and hit the 60 down the 60 down got turned to the inside almost hooked him at a right rear and 15 tried to save it if he splinted about 10 more feet down the corner one he would have avoided damage but uh, nose first into that inside fence James and 15 is gone just like that I think it was just more Barnes trying to pinch cooker on the outside there of turn four as best he could he he certainly was trying to make sure that the 69 couldn't get much of a run as they came down the front straightaway but he just uh, went a little bit too high up the track and I think that's that's all you can write for poor old Kyle Barnes but can't say it wasn't for a lack of trying that he tried to make this happen just uh, ran out of room ran out of space and I guess ran out of luck as you said the 69 get to have an opportunity to try to lock this thing out this puts Kaufman back in a position where the 30 machine may be able to get something Kyle Young who this could be a completely different story if the 93 doesn't have the bite in that car to get up here if he didn't get tagged in that right rear quarter panel an incident or two ago which gave him some pretty significant right side damage but even somebody like a Jody Green Christian Peterson who was just lapped down not all that long ago is now fifth and scored on the lead lap. If something happens up front, that last incident could have easily taken both of those drivers off the front rows. So even if you're not going to be in the fight off to one and two, you have to be up on it. Yeah, look at the 69. He does have a little bit of left damage and he doesn't have a little bit of right front damage from that incident with the 15. So got to think about, I said earlier that no one in the that was on the lead lap had any damage. And I think that's going to be quite the opposite of what I said earlier. The 69's got some damage. The 30's got some left rear damage. 93's got a lot of right front. Jody Green may have a little bit of damage. And then Peterson actually has probably the cleanest car out there. Um between those top five drivers with we'll let's have to see i think he maybe have a little bit of front end damage as well but i mean these guys have been just going flat out at it i think that's exactly what uh, james said earlier is that you know these guys are just going all for it and uh I, yeah i'm looking at the 23 and he's actually got some some serious right front damage so uh definitely one of those uh one of these races that's just been really action-packed and i think these cautions have been pretty spread out to give these guys some action but it's coming down to the end this will be the final restart of the night bristol be bristol and that's what top running cars look like after 96 laps uh from the bristol motor speedway we're gonna find out just how many laps are gonna be left to go on this restart this time by lights are out so for your race leaders you're gonna come and take the green flank the next time by that will be with just three laps to go so a three lap dash instead of your traditional green white checker that you see on Sundays usually, but still should be entertaining. And guess what? We've got Taylor Kaufman and Matt Cooker back together really for the first time since they got into it and brought out the yellow in turns one and two. So I wonder how long Kaufman's memory might be. Well, if there's any time that you're going to give somebody a little bit of a payback, late race, Bristol, final restart might be the best opportunity to do it. Pace car down and away. Three laps to go for Matt Cocker. Green flag flies. He's going to clear the 30 to quarter number one. Does Kaufman go to the inside? No. The top three single file out of quarter two. Yeah, these top four, five drivers getting a little spout. Christian Peterson just got a position right there. And it looks like Cucker's really just going to be able to sail away if he doesn't have any contest from the 30. And I just, that 30 is actually losing a little bit of ground on the outside. He's going to hold up the 23 in the outside lane. All right now is the 69 of Matt Cucker here. Yeah, a lot going on at a battle for second and 93, the 30, the 23. All going to try to sort that one out. But in front of the chaos is Matt Cucker, winner from two weeks ago at the Thompson Speedway. He'll go back to back in the car's late model stocks. Checkered flag, your winner from Bristol is Matt Cucker. Cucker oh, gets the win. Man. Young comes home second. Christian Peterson and Taylor Kaufman got into it in three and Kaufman went at least sideways. I don't think he went all the way around, but Peterson was able to bring it home third. And then Jody Green and Brad Carpenter round out your top five from the Slate Model Stock feature at Bristol. And third, he's going to go all the way to the back of the lead lap and come home with a sixth position tonight after being scored in second 
with just two laps to go in this race. But for Matt here he came into tonight as we noted at the top of the championship standings. He gets his second consecutive win. That's not that bad for the driver of the 69, picking up a little bit of momentum as we slowly work our way into the heart of this 2017 campaign. He celebrates on the front straightaway. We'll talk with him in just a moment. First, let's take this opportunity to look top to bottom at your LSR TV full race results for tonight's late model stock feature from Bristol Motor Speedway. Matt Cocker is your winner tonight. Kyle Young and Christian Peterson come home behind him in second and third. Impressive runs for those drivers who started in 11th and 10th respectively to come home inside of the top three. We will talk with those top three in just a moment. Jody Green, fantastic result for the driver. The 13 comes over to 14th position. Brad Carpenter with a result of P5. Taylor Kaufman will come home in that sixth position. Lance Garnley, Kyle Barnes, my incident will give him the seventh position. Scott Naslin, he'll finish eighth. Kyle Everall finishes ninth, and Robbie Bunden will finish tenth. Final three cars this evening are James Finn in the 61, who finishes 11th. Jeremy Adams got the wall early while running well, was up in the second position, finishes 12th at the end of the evening. Adam Rigo, last car in the field, finishes 13th tonight at Bristol. Let's head trackside with your race winner tonight in the late model socks from Thunder Valley. Matt Cocker gets his second consecutive Cars Esport Tour win. And we're trackside with the driver of the 69. Matt, congratulations on the W. You started up front. You finished up front. However, uh, it was not simply a walk in the park. It was uh, Bristol. And there were plenty of challenges, uh, including on some occasions, a little bit of contact towards the front of the field. Yeah, I mean, it was a rough one. I mean, to begin the night, I do not like this track at all. And uh, we were testing earlier in the week, and I would get loose off the corners, so I really tightened the car up so that wouldn't happen later on in the race. And a lot of the guys, they were starting to get loose. But um, I saw early on, Taylor was pushing it hard, and I knew he'd, he'd burn off his right rear the later we went on, so that's why I let him go. I mean, it happened to Scott. They just Everyone started getting looser and looser, and I was just saving my tires as much as I could, and... That's how it worked for me tonight. Just drove up after they all burned their stuff off and was able to get around them. Well, to put you guys in the best position, and they gave a couple shots at you, figuratively and literally, there late to try to get onto it. Uh, that final restart, though, uh, you're able to pull away to the tune of uh, one second and get the win here. That's now back-to-back -back wins for you in these late model stocks. You guys starting to get hot a bit? Ah. Uh I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say that. I mean, Jeremy put an awesome setup together, and then I just adjusted off of it. So, I mean, it feels good to win, but, I mean, it's not fun watching everyone wreck out and not having that many people to race against. So, hopefully, we get some more people in the next couple of weeks so we have more, more competition. I mean, I spun out, and uh, I only fell back to sixth. Uh, that ain't really much fun. But uh, to come back and win, I'm all right with it. So it's your second win in late model stocks. Uh, now the objective is to get the second win in, in the Super Late. You came into tonight in this division at the top of the championship standings, and the win's going to help, obviously. Uh, in the Super Late, you're second in the uh, championship standings, six points off at the top spot. Uh, saying that you're not a huge fan of Bristol, but now having this race under your belt, what's the expectations for race two on the night? Uh, that's just the last, the same as my expectation was for this race. I mean, Bristol, it's, I still don't like the track. Yeah, I, I might have got lucky tonight, just made the right adjustments before the race. But um, I, I don't really know what to say. It's just going to be about lasting, and hopefully I don't get in a wreck. That's all. Well, the cards fall in your favor in this one. Matt, we'll let you take off. Get set for race number two. Anybody want to say hi to while we got you? Uh, just want to say thanks to the Team Vince here. Uh, Globalcom, I analyze uh, you guys for broadcasting. It's been fun. Late model stock winner from Thunder Valley. Matt Cocker is your winner tonight. Matt, congratulations. Best of luck. Maybe we'll chat again in just a little bit. I hope so. Thank you. So that's the driver who comes home in the number one position tonight. Kyle Young is able to slither his way into a fantastic P2 result. Track side with him is Austin Koo. You're right here with the number 93 car, and at the late goings, with about 10 laps to go, you were in the top five, but you had sustained some damage earlier on the right front. Uh, we, we were worried that maybe you wouldn't be able to get up there, but with a little bit of luck and a little bit of patience, you were able to get second place out there, Kyle. Uh, tell us how your race went from your point of view. Well, it was, uh, <laughs> that, that didn't go at all how I was thinking it was going to go. Um, 
I was busy last night, so I didn't get any. Uh, I didn't get any qualifying laps or anything. Uh, I just got out of the 600 in NIS before we jumped into here. So the pace lap was literally my first lap uh, with the setup that I was running. Um, so it, it, it actually, you know, it obviously it went well. <laughs> um, it, uh, it, it, that, that was a massive surprise for me. Uh, we got caught up in a few little incidents, um, but the car really didn't get too beat up uh, bad at all, which I um, was really happy about. Uh, Bristol is not at all one of my favorite tracks. It's one of my more hated. Uh, so to be able to get a second place uh, with zero practice and uh, just with the reputation that I have here is is pretty cool. And it's also really nice to get another super awesome finish uh, in the late model stock. We had a pretty slow start to the season uh finally got a top five last week and we back it up with a runner-up this week so i'm pretty stoked yeah for all uh for you definitely should be at, the, at this point in the season there's still a lot of races to go but uh going throughout this race with the high banks of of bristol it's really different than most of the uh most of the courses that we go to on this uh late model socks series about how is it it's hard to set up this uh hat Sorry, let me start over. It's this car, car is not really that well suited for this track, but going through the setup and going through the track, how do you set up for uh for this as the car likes to bottom out in the corners? Well, the biggest thing that I was finding out as the race went on was I was just getting really, really loose up towards the top. Um so I tried moving around to see how well the car would uh would react to it and it felt a lot better running down on the bottom. Uh, towards the end of the race, it started to get a little harder, and especially during that last three-lap run with uh, Christian and Taylor behind me, um, it was really difficult to try to keep the car down on the bottom. Um, I wasn't entirely sure on if there was anything that I could do inside the car to try to help that out at all, um, but I was just kind of moving around the track to see where the car handled the best, and it really wasn't that bad down on the bottom uh, with the, the sideways feeling coming off. So, um you know, I, I still ventured up there, you know, could we during that second to last run, we kind of got a little boxed in. Um, we was moving around the track just to try to find some open spaces. And it, it didn't feel too bad as the tires wore on. But, um, you know, the, the nice thing about this combination, and you don't really see it too often, is the bottom line was actually there tonight. And it made it for pretty fun. It allowed you to move around the track to see where you wanted to run and where you wanted to be able to go. And... Uh, at least from my perspective, that seemed like it was a pretty amazing race. So I hope it was for you guys as well. Sure it was. And before we let you go, we we want to give you a chance to uh, give any shout outs, sponsors, who makes it happen for you on the 93 machine. Yeah, well, first and foremost, just want to thank everybody here at the Cars Esport Tour for everything that they do. Uh, really been enjoying uh, these first four, three and a half, I guess you can consider weeks uh, so far. Um, shout out to my man, Brandon Smizer for spotting me. He's been doing a great job up on the spotter stand, helping me out. Uh, him and I both stream these events him from, uh, my spotter stand and me from the in car, uh, twitch.tv slash sprint cup fan 24 for me, Sage pancakes for him. We'll be doing it again for this next race. Um, everybody at Revcom gaming, Revcom racing, the sim racing clan, TSRC TV, everybody that helps uh, support us and make this more entertaining. And, uh, hopefully we can back it up with another awesome running supers. All right, there you have it, 93 of Kyle Young. We'll talk to you soon, maybe, We'll with the hot streak that you've been on. And with that, we'll go to our third-place finisher, Christian Peterson, and he's been caught up by James Pike. Down here on pit road with the driver of the number 23 machine, one Christian Peterson. And Christian, I, I feel like if we have a pass the most cars in a race award, I feel like you probably get it because you just ran around everybody today. Talk about how your race went just with everything going on around you. Yeah, first of all, I got to give a shout out to Jeremy Adams. He uh, he put work in on the setup. I just made a few tweaks at the at the end there in the practice, and the thing was a rocket ship. I just screwed myself over. Uh, it was a little loose uh, in the beginning, so I was really just biding my time and um, – just trying to let everybody race themselves basically and save my tire and i went in right as it was coming to one to go and i forgot that i hadn't pit uh on the first time around so i ended up getting a black flag for getting um for entering a closed pit and i had a 15 second penalty in at bristol that's dreadful so i would, went two laps down and i mean to be honest i was surprised about how fast i was 
uh, after I made those changes, I tightened it up a little bit, and I was just able to just mat it. Like, I, I could basically just lift, and then once I got to the center, I was just full throttle, and the thing would stick and turn, and I could put it wherever I wanted to. And uh, everybody else, like, they gave me the top, and I was really surprised. Everybody seemed to be running the bottom, except for uh, Kyle Barnes there. at the. I got to second, and I just couldn't get by him, and Cooker behind me, my teammate, I didn't want to hold him up in second since we were getting down to the wire. Um, so I let him by. I think that kind of screwed me, too. I think I could have gotten back by him. Uh, Kyle there and then not had to be at the end of the longest line or no because uh, he gave us the uh, He put the end the lap cards at the end so that worked out But the thing it was just really tight at the end and I couldn't pass anybody at bottom But it was uh, it was really fun and the car was really fast <laughs> We've heard from a few drivers already and they've all said something to the effect of they didn't think this race played out the way they expected it to at least in terms of the way people raced each other out on the track and the cautions and everything that surrounds all that did the way this race pan out surprise you and having run this do you take anything into the super late model race and does it kind of change your expectations of what you think you might see in that feature um i actually yeah i guess i thought that people were going to be more patient at the beginning uh I thought we were going to get the first competition caution, and we didn't, so that was a little bit of a surprise. But um, I mean, I must have—it must have hit me somewhere. And I wasn't expecting something because I screwed it up going on a pit road, so something was uh, something was messed up there for me. But I mean, I don't know. I, I think everybody was just a little bit too loose, and it and it caused them uh, to be chasing the car after like 15 20 laps into a run and it got a little chaotic but i mean everybody seemed to do a really good job of putting it or keeping it together but uh they would just get a little close and things happen but all in all i think i don't know what we have like four or five so it wasn't that bad i know you've got a super late model points lead to go defend here in a little bit but before you do I'll give you a moment to send your shout outs your thank yous your love to all the sponsors and fans and people that make it happen for the number 23 machine um just everybody works on the setup jeremy adams uh cooker scott uh brad everybody over there uh and kyle barnes putting on the league so there is Christian Peterson finishes third tonight in the late model stock feature. And from here, I guess we'll go ahead and turn our attention over to the super late model feature, which will come up here in just a little bit. Yeah, it's super late models on track as we get set for the second race on tonight's Thunder Valley 200. Before they go track side, though, and get on the grid, we'll take a quick opportunity to step aside. We will be right back here on LSR TV at iRacing Live for race number two. You're watching the 2017 Cars Esport Tour at LSR TV Super Late Models from Bristol when we come back. There are three different paths if you want to call yourself a world champion of sim racing. NASCAR, open wheels, or endurance racing. But no matter which one you take, you can guarantee that the journey will always be tough, which few will ever complete. The iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series. The premier road racing series in sim racing started with a new car taking center stage. Then it was Martin Kronke resisting any challenge thrown at him to break the five year stranglehold of Gregor Hutu as being world champion. These drivers and teams are not just competing for pride, they're competing for money and with over $20,000 in prizes for each of the series up for grabs, drivers really do put it all on the line. The NASCAR Beginner for Series powered by iRacing is the premier NASCAR eSports series 
featuring the cars and tracks from the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. The 2016 campaign saw a return to the top of the mountain by Ray Alfala as a three-time Oval World Champion. The march to that championship was not easy, though, despite the fact that Ray Alfala took home the most points in series history. It just also happened to be the tightest championship fight we had ever seen. These guys are set for the 2017 campaign. The Blanc Pan GT Series hosts the top GT3 endurance teams in sim racing, with groups of three or more drivers sharing the wheel. This is a championship you can't win alone, and you need the same determination, passion and drive from your teammates to be successful. They often say that it takes just one mistake to lose a championship, and in team racing, it may not be your mistake that costs you the win. Last season, VRS Coanda Simsport won the championship by a single point. This year, who will step up to the plate? Racing Esport World Championships, the pinnacle of sim racing competition. Catch it all season long with live coverage on iRacing.com forward slash live. So, so cool, yeah. Um, Nate, what are you working on at the moment? Uh, so I'm working on the animation for the game. Uh, we're working on getting pit crews fully developed, and that involves uh, a lot of moving parts. So I'm going in and making sure that each moving part can uh, dovetail smoothly into the next one, so that when you pull in for a pit stop, it, uh, it looks like the real thing, as opposed to a bunch of jumbled pieces that suddenly stop and then go, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's so cool, but why aren't you working on the time model? Nothing. We Welcome back live to the Bristol Motor Speedway. Super late models on track as we continue our coverage of the championship esports association cars esport tour tonight from the world's fastest half mile. Already crowning a winner at late model stocks. Matt Cucker goes back to back. He won two weeks ago from Thompson and he won earlier tonight after 100 laps of action. So he is going to pad his championship lead in the late model stocks. But we transition into part number two of the evening, James, let's talk about where the super late models sit after three rounds. You just chatted with the driver who is leading the super late model points. That's Christian Peterson, also a winner in the most recent super late model race from Thompson. He's at the top of the pile. It's a few familiar faces up here at the top of the standings here in the super late models. Peterson leads the points. Matt Coker just won our late model feature and happens to be only six points behind Christian and Kyle Young sitting 10 back of them. So you've got a little trio of drivers who are doing double duty here, running both the late models and the super late models tonight at Bristol. Going to try and shake up the front of the point standings by the time we get to the checkered flag at the end of the evening. We just spoke uh, as well with Young on his good result in the late model stocks. He is the highest running driver in the super late model points without a win. He sits uh, sandwiched in between our three different winners that we've had in three different races. Cucker, Adams, and Peterson have won super late model races so far to this point. Fastest driver in the warm-up session, Okaya Leveralt, would very much enjoy to change that one. Our opening race on the night had its fair amount of cautions and its fair amount of Bristol action. A couple of cars getting torn up. 
some exciting battle and contact for the race lead. It went all the way down to a three lap to go restart. We will see if that's going to continue into this second race. Going to be the same distance, 100 laps, clock it in at just a little bit over 53 miles before uh, we reach the end of tonight's Thunder Valley 200. But these super late models got a little bit more pep to them from the cars we saw just before. Might make a bit of a difference. Yeah, these cars are actually lighter than the late models by about 300 pounds, and they have about uh, 150 more horsepower, or actually, uh, sorry, 200 more horsepower than the late models do uh, in the sim, and that is an astronomical amount to have the difference. You're going to see these drivers do way faster laps at this at this at this time, and they're going to be a lot closer too. It doesn't mean that they're going to be spread out as much. The sun has not quite set all the way behind the grandstand, so it is still a dusk condition here from Bristol, Tennessee. But cars are heading trackside, so once again, we go down and take a look at your LSR TV starting grid for the fourth super late model race on 2017. It's going to be Mike Inarelli who starts on pole for this one. He will be joined on the front row by the 62 of Cody McCrawley. Jody Green will start from third. Kyle Everalt will start from fourth as Scott Austin will roll from P5 courtesy. And that top nine invert, nobody inside of the top five has got a win so far this year. Yeah, look at Matt Cucker, the super or the late model stock driver. We just won that race. He's going to start in sixth place. Jeremy Adams starts seventh. Clint Crowell, he will start in the eighth position. Brad Carpenter starts ninth. And John Allette, he will start in the tenth position. Final five starters this evening are Robbie Budman starting 11th. Kyle Young begins from 12th. Christian Peterson starts 13th. Mark Annis Jr. from the 14th position. And Kyle Barnes, P15. The last great Coliseum clocks in at 0.533 miles in length. It's got 6 to 10 degrees of banky on the straightaways, 26 to 30 in the quarters. And as we've noted, 100 laps start to finish in our super late model feature. So based on what we saw in the late model stocks, James, any predictions for our super late model event? I wonder if any of the drivers who ran the late model race might have tightened up their cars or will look to try and tighten up their cars a little bit over the course of this race. We heard Christian Peterson say he thought everybody was a little bit loose. That might be the biggest thing I see. The other question is whether or not it's as intense and the racing is as close quarters as it was. Because we saw a lot of drivers get into it. We had a lot of cautions that resulted from contact. So those two things we'll keep our eye out for, see if they play true in this race as they did in the late model stock feature. And much of the contact wasn't, you know, from big groups of cars wadding things up. It was from good old hard racing. One guy getting into the other guy, two drivers who would not refuse to give up a little bit to his counterpart. Somebody ends up in the fence. That just is how Bristol works sometimes. So we get set to go race it for the second race on tonight's Thunder Valley 200. And we're happy that you're sticking around with us on LSR TV into iRacing Live. Mike Iterelli trying to get his first win in these cars on 2017. is going to bring us to the green flag. Pace car off the way. Green flag for us, but he gets Beat on the start. McCrawley top side to turn one. Yeah, look at McCauley get on the outside line, and he's going to definitely pull away. Looks like Leverall's also going to get that top lane hooked up. The 20, or yeah, the 29 is going to be losing a couple positions, maybe three before the first lap is completed. Wow. That invert's not working out too well for the 29, or it, maybe it did to get him that track position. But up front, McCauley is going to have to hold off the number seven as there's side by side action right behind them for the seventh and eighth position. Iarelli falls to fourth before he can stop the bleeding, and that's only after just two laps of contest. Battle for seven continues. Scott Austin's 05 at the inside, and Ido to John Ouellette is on the outside and way on the outside up against the fence. In the center of the corner, he's going to get boxed in, though, behind the 13 of Jody Green. And now that the line starts to flow up on the outside, the 05 might be in a good spot here. If he can get back up top, because everybody for the most part is up top. As you see, Ouellette clipped the wall in turn three just a little bit there on quarter exit. And then we've got one car around, Jody Green. Our first caution of the night comes out here. Trouble for the number 13 machine. Patriot fire car going to go around. It all stems from a little bit of a bobble coming out of turn number four. The car just lost the handle on it, and uh, it was a very late reaction on behalf of the driver of the 13 to get that wheel all the way to the right and 
Uh, did not even have an opportunity to get the tires locked up much more than maybe two seconds before that car got into the inside fence. I think it's fairly identical to what we saw uh, as the opening accident in our earlier race. And we noted the same thing, that inside fence is right there. You get loose very hard to avoid it. The only good thing about it being in this car than the late model uh, stock is that this car can take a little bit more of a beating, uh, so I think he's going to be fine. Uh, he's still going to have to come down pit road, get those, uh, get those uh, the ends of the car repaired, get it uh, all fixed up. Uh, it's not going to run as good as it was. Uh, aerodynamics are a little bit of part of the car like this at this kind of track, so he's going to be in a lot of trouble the rest of the race. But it did happen early, and I don't look, think it looks too bad. Maybe a little bit of uh, front end wheel damage, but it looks like he hit it like head on at the very front of the car. So we slow things down very early on in this super late model event. We speculated uh, as well in an opening race on the night, uh, you know, if we would see the competition Kasha come out at any point, which is 40 laps of consecutive action without incident. Uh, we have a little bit of a bigger field as well for this super late model race. So I think statistically speaking, uh, the chances of that 40 lap uncontested run uh, do drop down a little bit. Jody Green took a pretty hard hit. The 13 is still on the lead lap, but I mean, the front of that car is basically destroyed. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it's a 14 car lead back because uh, Green's going to be limping. And I think uh, if we get into a long green flag run, where green limps and what lane he decides to ride on this racetrack may play into things because the leaders will come around to him and lap him eventually. When you've got a car that heavily damaged, it's inevitable. And I wonder if he ends up playing into what happens here and maybe say 40 or 50 laps as we start working our way through this feature. And we saw lap traffic in a little bit of a different way with Peterson. In that last race, he wasn't getting lapped. Ironically enough, he was trying to unlap himself around the leaders and did where the lap car should go, and that is stay on the inside of the racetrack. But because he was as fast, if not even at that particular moment, just a little bit quicker, uh, it did kind of string things out on the outside up against the fence and allowed the top three guys to bunch up with each other in a late race battle for the number one position. Cody McCrawley started this race in second, but he was the first driver to collect the green flag. He will now be the control car for this restart. Kyle Leveralt, who started in fourth, jumps up to P2. He will sit on his right-hand side at a quarter number four. Green flag flies. We go back underway. Yeah, not a good start for the outside of the number seven and looks like all the other drivers are going to come swooping in. But those first three drivers actually do have a pretty good jump on the rest of the field. Look at Leverall, really power on that outside. He's got it hooked up pretty well. And look at the 69 of Cucker. He's just going to lay back just a little bit. He's got a little bit more on the line, but I think the seven of Leverall knows where it needs to go. He's had a rough season this far and he hasn't won since the middle of last season. So he's definitely looking to, to change things around this season. It's been really tough for that seven all the season. He's catching that 62 uh, ever so slightly. Every little lap is really chewing off just a little bit each time. Leverall gained the most positions out of the last race, up three spots in the championship standings into tonight runs in sixth in the points and trying to continue with that streak here tonight. It is starting to turn it into a little bit of a two-horse race as the top two pull away from third place. Matt Cocker, who is a second off of the number one position, I think top to bottom the last time around, single file. Everybody tries to find a spot in line, maybe knock off some laps here early still from Bristol. Knock off the laps is the key phrase in all of that. I think we just want to see these guys get to, you know, lap 30, lap 40. See if we can get a competition yellow. If you're anybody that's in this field, you, you don't want to end up with the trouble that we ran into in the late model stock race. And I think especially the guys who drove in that will be wary of that. Maybe not necessarily so aggressive here in the opening stages, but whoever else not necessarily taking heed of that because he's driving it pretty deep into the corner, at least as far as anybody could, or at least just about as far as anybody could for someone who's running as high as he is. Hey, what, I've been watching the 69 at Cocker too, and he's been hitting the fence almost every single time into the corner. I'm not sure if he thinks or if he's kind of realized that hitting the fence helps the car turn, but the 16 is better. The 69 has been showering the 89 of Adams with sparks almost every other time. And in fact, Cucker's not really catching up to Loverault. Loverault is falling back to him. 
because the gap between one and three remains the same, but the seven is losing time to McCrawley, and he's starting to get closer and closer to the 69 at Cocker. So maybe that seven struggling here to get into a rhythm. He seems a little bit more all over the racetrack looking for grip as opposed to the guys behind him who are hitting the same spots every single time. Oh, big, big hit on the outside for the seven right there. I think he's getting that car out a little too high on the track right now, and uh, he's getting a little bit of bobble right there, and he's going to lose it. Yep, he's going to go right the inside fence. Come to a stop on the inside and expecting a caution flag to come out from the tower. Kyle Everall, we were just talking about that he was struggling. There is the yellow from race control, and obviously the Sapid was struggling with the handle, and he was falling back, falling back, but... I have to think, James, the straw that broke the camel's back might have been that big shunt into the fence he had a couple of laps ago that really loosened that seven up. Yeah, just a struggle for Leveron all night. And I, I think part of it was just how hard he pushed that car in those opening few laps. You saw him make contact with the outside retaining wall a few times with the right side before he spun it out. And I think if you're any of the other drivers, you just at least take note of that. Make sure that you don't necessarily push your car as hard. There's a point to which you obviously want to push. You want to be fast. You want to be competitive. But if you overdrive it a little bit, then you can end up damaging your car. And once you get damaged to these things, you can't get that speed back. You're slower by just a little bit for the rest of the race. So picking and choosing your battles, a very important thing here, especially as we get towards the second half of this race and the final few laps. And the, the issue with uh, repairs is even if you do have the opportunity to come down to the pit lane for either required or optional repairs, like you just said, that car's never going to get back to 100%. The sheet metal might look a little bit better. It might get a, you know, a piece of bodywork put back on the car, but it's going to drive differently, and that's going to be not going to be to the point where you can't drive it, uh, but you are going to notice it, and even if it just knocks you off by a couple of hundreds per lap, that will kill you as the race goes on. So, two early cautions in this super late model race. Cody McCrawley is continuing to lead up front. He's led every single lap to this point. Quarter distance the next time around. Cucker jumping up to second. Jeremy Adams going to take over third. John Ouellet in fourth. And Brad Carpenter your top five as we get sent for another restart. 13 drivers scored on the lead lap. Also, what I note, uh, I noted that Jody Green was on the lead lap, but uh, was pretty torn up that I was at that point said that it's basically a 14 car lead lap. Well, since then, uh, Jody Green has realized that the 13 is not in operating condition, and that car has gone behind the fence and added this thing. So Green get to come home at the back of the pack. A tough day for two drivers kind of in both races jody green had a fairly decent race in the first and now has had a, a down race so uh, it's gonna have to try uh, a lot harder next week to get that car back into shape and uh, get the get it uh, or two weeks from now and get up to shape two by two right now and i'd say if i'm a betting man i'd start looking to the, some of these guys towards the back of the pack i think during christian peterson's uh, interview he said he's kind of just waiting for these tires to really fade away for those guys up front so definitely look for about halfway through this race someone like the 23 someone like the 98 and some of those other guys back there to really start going hard I'll tell you what a high standard Christian Peterson Matt Cucker and Kyle Young are the top three into tonight on points Young the only driver out of those three without a win but all of them have finished no worse than top five in all three races in the Super Lates so far this season green flying and a fly we are one fourth way to the end Cody McCrawley first time tonight as a challenger Cucker to the outside it's not going to work Got two single file and take off down the back battle behind with the 81 of Roulette Lud is side by side with another car. That's going to be the 31 of Brad Carpenter that's come up a few spots since that restart. Was able to get away from everybody else. Zulet nearly loses it out of turn two. Boy, did he have that 81 sideways and might have made contact with the wall a little bit there too. So Lud just trying to hang on to that car. And as he does, we've got Christian Peterson and we've got the 05 car of Scott Austin and Robbie Bundon up there, all a host of cars just trying to get past that 81 machine. At yeah, that time, the 81 and the 87 both got into the inside of fence on the outside of the racetrack, and it's going to cost them both some time. And there was a lot of sparks flying as they try to walk that fine line between giving the guys in the inside room and getting high enough to be in that lane without overstepping that cushion and getting up into the fence. But again, it's so common here, as long as you don't smack it, 
little bit of sparks. Never hurt anybody, but it is going to cost you let some time. He was fourth off for the restart. He falls to seventh. Meanwhile, challenge up front, it's Jeremy Adams inserting himself into the picture, not wanting to let McCrawley and Cocker get away like they did last time. He sits right there in third and watches as we go side by side for the race lead. And Cucker really wants the lead right now, trying to make the bottom work. And I'd say he's got a really fast car, probably a faster car than 62, but he's got to get around him. And with the way these cars work, they work faster, almost faster than the Monster Energy cars in the corners. Now the straightaway is definitely not, not even close to being the case, but these cars can run so fast in the corners at the top side that it's almost it's very similar to what those cars would drive. And now you're seeing the 89 and Jeremy Adams make the outside work, and he's going to get the position on that Cucker fairly easily, as looks like the 69 is probably going to have to get those those tires cooled down before he makes another move like that. But look at the 62. He's trying the bottom now. A little bit different strategy than what he's got. But it looks like we're going to have a caution that's going to end all the action right now. And that not sure what that's going to be for. Heard it was somebody coming off of corner number four, and it may have been. It was the 87 Robbie Bundit. We'll work on getting a second look at that one up on the screen in a moment. I uh, noted that he was one of the drivers, along with Ouellette, who was getting into the fence a lot off of the restart. And uh, the 87 kind of stepped up from the bottom to the top into the corner over the nose of Ouellette. And as he got into the fence, Ouellette tapped him to the back end and both of those things happening simultaneously really upset the 87 and it spun down to the inside we've been talking about that pesky inside wall well he ran out of real estate and pow right into the barrels on the pit road entry and that basically tore that car up yeah just a really really tricky night for a lot of those drivers bundon was able to get the wall knocked down pretty well before he spun out and got into the inside retaining wall on pit road but again it goes back to the same kind of theme I think we've seen here a lot tonight because we know that more often than not, especially as you get up through the ranks here in the sim, that the high lane is the fast lane usually around Bristol, but that comes at a cost if you knock down the outside retaining wall and quarter entry. So you could run up there and you could be fast, but you have to make sure you avoid hitting the wall in order to maintain that sort of quick pace throughout the duration of this feature. The drivers are going to trickle down to the pit lane, those with damage, to try to get those things fixed back up a little bit. Did a race control over the radio reminding these drivers that now that 35 laps have been complete, the competition caution clock is off because uh, would have to go at least 40 laps to get a competition yellow. 40 laps from now, we will be inside of that 25 lap to go window in which we will not get any uh, caution flags of the competition sort. So uh, competition cautions will not be a factor in the rest of this race. Same case was uh, earlier on in the night uh, with the late model stocks. We're starting to see drivers in the back of the pack work their way up again at one point in our earlier race, the drivers running one, two, three out of racetrack had started 13th, 12th, and 11th, all the way at the back. And uh, as noted, Christian Peterson, Coop, you were just talking about it, started at the back, hung out at the back, saved the tires before making his charge to the front. He's still lurking way back at 11th, but I've got my eyes on the Kyle Youngs and the Kyle Barnes, who started outside the top 10 that are starting to tiptoe forwards. Yeah, definitely expect those guys to tip the other way forwards, especially in the same manner. Uh, they're basically where they were in the last race for them. It's almost three feet, just a little bit more horsepower in the corners. And same, about the same temperature as the last race as well. And it's almost the exact same thing. And uh, just got to be really patient. Maybe it's almost like a second chance for both of these drivers to maybe get a better finish for the 93. He wants a win for the 15. Uh, he's the admin of the league. And uh, this is his first race with these guys this season. And occasionally that 15 will come out, bring the car out to the track and, and have a little bit of fun. And doesn't try and get in these guys' way, but just tries to, to race them as much as uh, anybody else would. But at the same time, he wants to get his, he wants to get a good finish as much as anyone else here, and uh, it'll be easy to see as he drives the rest of this race. 48 machine up there. That's Clint Crowell. Uh, obviously, going to keep our eyes on Mikey and Ronelli, who is uh, back in ninth position after starting on pole. Has really only gone backwards so far and tonight. We'll see if he's able to find anything back from road number five. McCrawley, though, has been so good on these restarts that he's going to get another opportunity to do one with 39 laps complete as of this time by. Going to come underneath the flag stand as the green flag flies and we go back and wave, but a great jump for Cucker. Here he comes from third, trying to get second. First off away from Jeremy Adams, but Adams has other plans. Fantastic run at a turn two and snatches it right back. 
It's almost like Coker decided to back off of McCauley so he didn't get into the rear of him as Coker decided to go ahead and get the run, or rather Carpenter decided to get the run up the high side. So uh, just a whole lot of action going up there, and you've got a whole bunch of people up there fighting for position, trying to fight their way towards the front of the field. But it looks like, I think the one thing I'm noticing here is that a lot of these cars are relatively clean. Nobody's really knocked down the outside wall yet. So I think what you're seeing here for the most part is that the most patient drivers of this race with obviously the fastest pace, of course, have found their way up to the front of the field now that we're a little bit into this race. It'll be halfway in seven laps from now. The race lead is very much in, in game and up for play. McCrawley only about a half a car length in front of Adams. Conquer right there as well. The top three trying to separate themselves a little bit from the Carpenters and Youngs of the world who run fourth and fifth and, and so on and so forth. But the top five last time by still with it one second of each other. Nice and tight. Nobody saw to buy saw it amongst that group, but tight enough where if you make a mistake, there'll be somebody for sure to make you pay for it. Just want to make a short note that Donald Lett hit the outside wall, came back and hit the inside wall on the back stretch, right in front of the 15 of Kyle Barnes, and it looks like he's going to be out for the rest of the race as these guys continue to fight top five positions up for grabs. Kyle Young, Carpenter, Cucker, Adams, McCauley in reverse order. You can see them all in one frame, one shot here, as it's just kind of a matter of time of which one makes the move first. 93 of Kyle, of Kyle Young, he's really kind of pushing the issue a little bit. It looks like he gets a little bit loose and is going to try a different line here as these guys go on lap 47. A little bit further back it was a short-lived battle between Ian Arelli and uh, the 23 of Christian Peterson, but the 23 is now on the move. Up six positions with that move up to seventh. After starting in 13th, the 23 slowly starting to put the right foot down more and more and appears to be following the strategy that he used in the opening race to finish up near the front, and that is take your time, save the tires, work your way up to be there at lap number 100. No sense in being there at lap 50. I know that McCrawley would love to lead this thing top to bottom, and if he can do it, more power to him. But it doesn't matter if you lead laps number 1 through 99, and you can't lead lap number 100. So always a good strategy to try to pace yourself in these things. Pace yourself and find patience, and just make sure you hit your marks and execute. I think we find, especially if you get into the sim and you race a little bit, that more often than not, the best laps you run are the ones that you put down when you get into a rhythm. And when you're not, you don't necessarily focus on trying to chase down someone, but instead focus on making sure that you run your race and hit your mark. That's when you start seeing those gaps to the drivers in front of you come down. And I think, especially if you're Adams or you're Cooker or Carpenter, that's where your focus needs to lie if you're going to try and run down any of these top, you know, two, three, four drivers to get to McCauley and try and run for the race lead. Halfway home that time by, let's take a quick look at your iRacing Midway Race Break brought to you by iRacing, the leading online racing simulation developed from the beginning as a centralized racing and competition service. iRacing organizes, hosts, and officiates races on virtual tracks all around the world. And in the fast-paced world of esports, iRacing is your one-stop shop for all things online racing with officially sanctioned series by NASCAR, IndyCar, IMSA, World of Outlaws, and many more. going to be a three-way battle for the race lead led by Cody McCrawley who started this race in second. He leads over Jerry Adams who runs P2, Matt Cocker who runs in third, and Brad Carpenter who's right there in the picture as well in fourth position. All those drivers started inside of the top 10 behind them. Christian Peterson who started in 13th has picked up two more spots since we last checked in with the driver of the 23 who's now top five. Yeah, Mike Inarelli, he's in that sixth position after starting on the pole. So not such a bad position for him right now, and he's got lots of space to drive by himself. Right behind him is going to be the set 15 of Kyle Barnes, and he's going to be right in front of the two, fighting for position. Kyle Young and Scott Austin, and it looks like Austin's going to get that one right there. Drawing at the top 10 is Mike or Mark Annis Jr. Last five cars in this race. Clint Kroll is the last one on the lead lap, some 13 seconds back in 11. These last four have run into trouble earlier on tonight. John Olette, 12th. We saw him just hit the wall. Robbie Bunden got into trouble in turn three earlier. Kyle Lamarall lost control of his car, as did Jody Green, who spun it out on the exit of turn four and is the last car in this order. He will finish tonight in the 15th position.
We look top to bottom at our iRacing Midway Race Break. For more information on the wide variety of sim racing possibilities online, you can visit iRacing.com and sign up today. If you're considering it, there is no better time than now, because if you go to iRacing.com forward slash World of Outlaws, you're going to get a look at two exclusive promo codes. You can either choose to get a one-year iRacing membership for over 50% off the sticker price, or if you're not sure about that, you can try out the sim. You can get a three-month subscription for less than five dollars again that's valid through the rest of 2017 on new iRacing memberships only and you can get that discount by going to iRacing.com forward slash world of outlaws fighting going on inside of the top five is now a five-way battle here comes peterson looking to pick up a fourth spot since we were last under the caution flag not going to be able to do it that time cocker Holding him off on the outside of the racetrack for the top five, but then one second of each other. Fantastic stuff chasing down McCauley, who remains P1. Yeah, and Peterson's really trying to make the bottom work. It's not really been the preferred line right now, but at the same time, these guys have been banging on the outside of the track, and sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. Uh, and we can see the di you can definitely see the difference when they do hit it or whether they get sucked into the outside or just use it as a little small pivoting point but the 23 he's going to the very bottom he might slide up right here he's going to definitely try and it did not work but he's going to probably have it in the next time or two and so he'll try and slot up maybe try the 31 looks like we got a smoker on the back straight uh, so, but that's not going to be a caution flag right now. Let's at the 31 as well. Brad Carpenter going to try the inside as well. So we're getting a lot of uh, drivers getting a little bit more uh, impatient trying to pass here. And I was trying to take a look for the driver who may be the source of the smoke, and there's too many drivers that could be coming for it. I'm not going to blame it on any specific guy because only eight drivers are left on a lead lap at this point. Tightly packed together for second, third, fourth, and fifth. The only driver on the inside of all of this has been the 23, but he's going to be joined by Cocker. So two on the inside, two on the outside is Christian Peterson. Looks like the best driver on track. He's up to third and still not satisfied. Peterson driving hard underneath. We'll let you know that it was Kyle Young that went around on the back straightaway and uh, at least put up the smoke. Didn't cause the yellow, though, but he was the spinning car there that at least gave us pause for a bit. Meanwhile, Peterson's got second position now and is now going to try and go after McCauley for the race lead, driving from the back of the field. He started 13th and goes right underneath McCauley and I think will be scored. Yes, will be scored with the race lead and will complete the pass here on lap 71. Christian Peterson, points leader to the front of the field. And I was expecting him to slide right up over the nose of the 62. Probably the best idea that he did not. He was about two or three inches shy of clearing him out of four. But uh, impressive stuff from Christian Peterson. McCauley to this point again started second but has led all the way. The 62 has looked fantastic. Carpenter's been there and the 31 going to get turned. He and the 89 get tangled up in big contact on the front. Oh boy, that's going to be... Quite the interesting one to talk about. Brad Carpenter doing so well for so long and then just a little bit of contact right there off of four. That's gonna be that's gonna be one that needs to be talked about afterwards. Definitely not anything intentional. I would I would say that the 89 uh, definitely did not mean to do that, but definitely walked up the track and just could not stop that car from doing that and really takes them both out. And those guys made the first bit of contact, and they would have been okay, but they couldn't get off each other. They bounced off about four times before they both ended up with a pretty good luck. The 31 getting the worst of it into the inside of fence. The only reason I was looking at Carpenter, because I was going to say, McCauley was in a battle for the race lead. He wasn't running away, because Carpenter and Cucker were there. But the 62 was fast enough where those guys weren't really able to get to his inside, which is why it was so impressive just how easy Christian Peterson made that look. And as I was taking a look back at the third one to make that note, they got tailed up at a four. And not the first time tonight we've seen contact with drivers inside of the top five. I think maybe it's impressive that Peterson was able to get around McCauley the way he did, but I think we also have to note that we haven't really seen much of Christian Peterson at the front of the field because he did not take a qualifying time and had to run his way through the back to the front to get up there. Normally in these races, Peterson will take a time and qualify near the front. And we'll see that car usually from the beginning of the race at least be in contention, but haven't seen a lot of them tonight. But I think it's all the more impressive 
for him to be up here when you consider just how clean that 23 car is. Not really a lot of damage anywhere on the Peterson Irrigation Chevrolet. And I think that that speaks a lot to just how patient I think Peterson's been in picking his way through these cars and getting back to the front of the field. And he's been doing it in a multitude of ways. There's only seven drivers on the lead lap. So even if he, if he, you know, went out on the racetrack and didn't pass a single driver under green, he could assume seventh position. But it was a combination of hanging back in those opening, I would say it was about the 40 opening laps of this race or so, uh, up until the most recent restart before the one that's going to come up here. Uh, picked up spots from drivers wrecking out of this race. But on that last run, he went from sixth to the race lead uncontested by himself at a green. And, and he just walked all over everybody. Uh, so the 23, very impressive, and I think at this stage has the best car, no doubt. This series so far this year has been one of trends. In the opening three races of the season, we saw Adams, Peterson, and Cucker get wins. They each won one late model stock race and one super late model race. So before tonight, we hadn't seen a repeat winner in a single series. But Matt Cucker won two weeks ago at Thompson in the late model stocks. One here tonight from Bristol, first back-to-back -back winner in a car and first two-time winner on the season in a single car. Now Christian Peterson, who won at Thompson two weeks ago in these super late models, is in a position closing in on 20 laps to do the 20 laps to go to do the same thing that Cocker just did, which would be the first driver to get two wins in these super lates and the first driver to go back to back in them. Oh yeah, and he looks like he's in the position to do it. Dude. Like you said, 23 is just on fire, and all the other drivers under the caution talked about it a little bit and definitely said that the 23 is just uh, a bat out of hell right now, and he's going to be really, really hard to catch at this point. But with all those tires starting to cool down, it, it does give a little bit of a hope for some of these other drivers to get that position back. The pace car going to give us a restart with 22 laps to go from Thunder Valley. Is this the last one? And does Peterson have it up in the reservoir? Green flag flies. Good jump on the outside for Cody McCauley. It'll really be a fight for a second behind, and he'll be able to maintain P2. Thought about the inside. Got a little loose. Not going to happen. Yeah, it looks like these guys are starting to fly around just a little bit more in the corners, a little bit looser in each corner side. No really side-by-side -side action right now, but it does look like these guys are trying to really just sink in and you know, ride these 20 laps out, try to get an advantage, get in a rhythm. As James said earlier, if you can get in a rhythm, you you can almost be unstoppable if you have just the right car set up and just the right mentality going through these corners. But I think the one driver that's already in a rhythm is Christian Peterson in number 23 car. He's just uh, flat out, out up there. Uh, he's about to lap, looks like, the number uh, 93 of Kyle Young for a second time tonight. And he's going to be off to a half second lead. I think that's the biggest lead that we have seen all night between both races. And not to say that you can't be fast and in a rhythm when you're up on the outside of the racetrack, Coop, but the reason guys go way up there is to make the corner as long as it can to widen it out so you could have more opportunity and a better opportunity to make that car turn and rotate. So you know you're really hustling if you hold the bottom and you're quicker than the guys behind you. Peterson sucked it down on the inside line and still the best car on track. That 23 is on a roll. Uh, most definitely does look like we do have a side-by-side -side battle uh, just momentarily. I'd say that was lap car. Kyle Young, he actually just got uh, got, a, got a pass around Jeremy Adams for position on the track. Uh, just being out there, Jeremy Adams has actually parked it in the garage, but those top three, they have spread out just a little bit. And with the very few cars that are still on track, I do believe that a lot of these drivers with 15 laps to go, trying to just get everything they got left, but also just trying to salvage what they got with the only six cars in the lead lap and a couple cars on the off lap. And just to think that about 25 laps ago, we saw the top five in this race within one second of each other. Now your race leader, Christian Peterson, has over a second lead to Cody McCauley in P2. And I think the biggest reason for this separation is the fact that we saw those two drivers take each other out while running in second and third on the racetrack. That took two of the top runners out of this race. It dropped the cars on the lead lap down to six. And that was a perfect set of circumstances for Christian Peterson. 12 laps to go from Bristol he is not looking back only thing that could save McCauley would be a yellow and a restart I, I'd say that would definitely help the 62 at this point but I, I have to believe that even at this point 
this, the 23 of Christian Peterson has done an absolutely good job. He did exactly what he said he was going to do in the last race in his interview, and I have no uh, no reservation in saying that he, this is exactly what he did in this race. And he continues to strengthen that lead. It continues to be the biggest lead that we've had and, and probably will have. Uh, before it's all over uh, as he continues to stretch it out over a second and a half right now and that car is just hooked up he just he barely was working on the tires just wasn't battling was just really playing it safe and smart and i track like this it eats up those tires really eats up the car this was perfect he's up to a two second lead now he's almost almost uh, got it by half of what he did between when i started talking about him We'll tell you what, McCauley almost got that yellow he needed. Scott Austin about knocked the fence down in his Pruitt Team Chevrolet. Big lick at a quarter number four, and it's Bristol. We expect guys to get up into the fence, but he pounded it pretty good coming off of the turn. Heavily damaged the right-hand side. Mikey Inarelli has been able to pass him because of that and pull three seconds, and I believe Mark Annis Jr. is now going to catch up to the 05 and pass him. So Scott Austin had a good car, was running top four. Self-inflicted error going to drop him to the back of the lead lap as the 98 dives to the inside this time. Now, P6, not a bad result, but two positions lower than I think the 05. Could have been in and in, just wanted it a little bit too much. He got sideways, and that was close. Five to go this time. Yeah, those cars are barely loose out there. These drivers sometimes create the setup so they can barely make it to 100 laps, and maybe that's what the 98, he's still looking to the very bottom of the track, almost to the black right there on the inside. And, you know, when you're trying to, to, to keep that car at the very bottom, that the car is just too loose in the top to really make anything happen. Looks like he's got the speed to get around the 05. Well, just only time will tell. Only a few more laps. Looks like the 05's in the outside wall, actually, as they're going side by side. Looks like Annis will get the position. And it was a pretty good kiss that time, but a four, basically the same place that he fenced it a couple of laps prior, just when he did it the first time, it was a lot harder, and Ennis is going to be able to get that number five position. How about that, though? Plus nine positions for the driver of the number 98 machine. For Christian Peterson, though, running away into the sunset, 2.2 seconds. And for Dakota McCauley, who's got a handle on the number two position. Christian Peterson coming to four this time. White flag in the air. Last lap from Bristol. He'll be the first driver in 2017 to park a super late model at Victory Lane twice. Did it two weeks ago at Thompson, and he does it tonight at Bristol. Checkered flag. Peterson wins the Thunder Valley 200. Wow, two back-to-back -back wins from Cucker last race, and now Peterson in this race. Well, I think we've uh, we've definitely seen where the bar is set for these guys, and definitely seen that Peterson is a force to be reckoned with in the season. So, like you said earlier, he's here to defend his championship points lead, and uh, the best way to do is to finish first and uh, get the most points possible at it. And that 23 is going to do a burnout right here in front of us, and I'd say that... Uh, it's going to be a long season for a lot of these guys that they can't figure out how to beat this 23. And I told you that the numbers game and the trends continue. Conquer just about uh, 45 minutes ago, decided to uh, get another win in the late model stocks. He was the first driver in late model stocks to get two wins and did it back to back. And now Christian Peterson. First driver to get two wins in the super late models back to back from Thompson to Bristol. And to be fair, Coop, Thompson and Bristol are nothing alike. And those are the two tracks that both drivers, your both your winners tonight, have doubled up at. I think that the, the, the fact that these both these drivers have a lot of skill at is the fact that there's a lot of top side uh, groove speed at both tracks. But if you can do the top and the bottom, which is what they both could do, at uh, at both tracks, I think that's where they really started to uh, really started to strive and saving your stuff. I think it's been really the uh, the motive for this whole season, saving your tires to when it really matters. Uh, we saw Peterson lose a race earlier on in the season because of that, and now he's definitely going to rebound and win because of that here at this race. We'll take an opportunity to step aside. First, let's look top to bottom at your LSR TV full race results 
for tonight's super late model feature. Christian Peterson gets the checkered flying second on the season for him. Cody McCauley comes home second. Matt Cocker comes home third. We will be trackside with them on the other side. Pole sitter Mikey Adarelli with a fourth place finish tonight. And Mike Grianis Jr. picks up fifth in the dying laps and comes home in that number five spot. Finishing six, uh, finishing six is Scott Austin, Clint Crowell. He'll finish in the seventh position. Kyle Young finishes eighth. Uh, Jeremy Adams, he will finish in the ninth position after having that hard wreck. Kyle Barnes finishes tenth. Brad Carpenter will finish the eleventh position. John Allett finishes twelfth. Robbie Bundon, thirteenth. Kyle Everall finishes fourteenth. And Jody Green, he'll be the last car out there at fifteenth position. That is your LSR TV full race results. We will step aside, and when we come back to Bristol, we'll head trackside, talk with your top finishers, talk about tonight's Thunder Valley 200, and get you set for the next race on the calendar in three weeks' time from the Kentucky Speedway. You're watching LSR TV's coverage of the Championship Esports Association's Cars Esport Tour on iRacing Live post-race from Bristol, Tennessee, in just a moment. Welcome back live to the Bristol Motor Speedway following the conclusion of tonight's Thunder Valley 200. Now four races complete on the 2017 Cars Esport Tour, part of the Championship Esports Association. Tonight's coverage of the Cars Esport Tour has been brought to you by Joel Real Timing, the official timing software of LSR TV. Whether you spend your time in the sim behind the wheel on the pit box or from the spotter stand, JRT is your go-to software for iRacing timing and scoring analytics. You can get yourself a basic download or GoPro today at joel-real-timing.com for more information. Second driver on the year to go back to back this time, it is Christian Peterson's turn. He is your winner tonight in the super late models that we are now trackside with the driver of the number 23 christian congratulations on the win that is now two in a row for you and that 23 team and i'll tell you what based on uh, you know your comments from earlier on in the night we were kind of watching to see how you would hang back and how you navigate your way through the field and uh, right at about that halfway point you guys flipped the switch and came flying through the field and looked untouchable yeah the car was on rails man uh cody we got a caution there cody queued up and said something and he was like i got nothing for you man and i was I, I don't know i don't know how i did it uh i gotta thank jeremy again he gave me the baseline setup i just made a few little tweaks and the thing was i've never been that much uh faster than everybody um and i don't think it's ever gonna happen again so hopefully we can go back to bristol again uh in this thing because it is a lot of fun and i uh i like it but I think if we do go back, everybody will catch on and maybe save a little bit more tire. I think everybody was driving really hard at the beginning. And as you could probably see, I don't know if you caught me on the broadcast, I was in the back just literally half throttle around the corners because um, you got to be in the throttle so much here to keep up. So 
I knew there was going to be the, you know, the other uh, competition cautions and all that. So just, uh, was playing my time and it, it uh, the plan fell into place this, uh, this race. Did you know coming into tonight that this was going to be the objective in this SLM race regardless, or did you kind of make that concrete decision to hang back that much based on the results from earlier and how that played out? I kind of had that feeling, but I mean, I was really just kind of relying on Jeremy and whoever built the setup because I was, I had, I didn't, uh, have any time to do anything this week. Um, so I got on, I did like a hundred laps before the race here and I could tell the tires were going to be an issue because I was, no matter what I did to the setup, um, I was really loose, uh, after like 20, 25 laps, um, driving really hard. And I knew that we're going to drive really hard at the end. So I needed to last more than that. So, um, drove really easy at the beginning and, and yeah, it was there. I don't know. I, uh, it was a lot of fun. So we noted uh, just about an hour ago, we were talking with Matt in the late model stocks that it was uh, three races up until this week and three different winners. And, and both of those winners uh, represented the wins in both categories of car. Uh, he's the first driver to get two wins in late model stocks. He goes back to back. You're the first driver to get two wins in these super late models. And you do it back to back. Uh, Thompson and Bristol, uh, the combo for you guys. Is this something that you guys are just kind of figuring out the competition? And is the 23 just a fan of these last couple of tracks uh bristol is definitely one of my good tracks thompson too i mean it's my home track i'm up in connecticut that's where i live so um i've ran there a few times uh not necessarily on the oval i've been around turn three and four backwards but um yeah <laughs> i don't know yeah this track and that track like especially this track it's it's really like daytona for these cars so um with tire wear like it's basically like old daytona um and a little bit of braking so you just got to buy it and uh hopefully it falls into your plan yeah like you said i'm kind of we're kind of learning the competition a little bit like i don't know there what there's not as many cars as uh last season so you you have the uh opportunity to save your tires uh better at early and not lose as much track position later so that helps a lot but um it's still a lot of fun there's still like really good competition and uh i can't wait for the kentucky oval that should be really interesting that was going to be my next question, because if you if you look at the calendar, there's a lot of fantastic short tracks on it. Bristol's always exciting. Uh, Martinsville, Five Flags, and, uh, you know, Sobo at the end. Those are all names that everybody's familiar with. The Kentucky Legends Oval is a little bit different. What's the prep going to be like, and what are you predicting for that one as you come in as now a two-time defending race winner? Um, that's going to probably be my specialty to build. Uh, I like those flat, like, building – I like them. I don't know how to build a track uh, setup for like these high banks, uh, like Bristol, uh, Thompson. I can do it. Um, this track, I don't. With these kind of cars, you got to build like a, such a stiff setup. I don't really know how to do it. But uh, a track like that, a little bullring. I mean, it's just basically getting it to how you want it to drive. So you got to get it to turn in the center. You got to get it to have bite off, and you got to get it to break uh, how you like to break. So um, if you got those three things. Uh, you'll probably have a good night. Well, tonight was a good night for you. Third earlier, a checkered flag tonight in this second race uh, and a two-time winner now in these super late models. This will also help you boost that championship lead uh, that you had over Cucker into tonight. It was six before, and you'll be able to pick up a couple of spots walking away uh, with the 32. Christian, we'll let you take off. First, though, the sponsors, the shout-outs, and all that good stuff it makes it happen for you. I'll just shout out Jeremy, everybody over there that does work on the setups. Uh, Kyle Barnes for the league, you guys. Um, I think I think my my parents are downstairs watching. Uh, I got to shout out them and uh, shout out uh, John Dell. He's I think he's watching too. That is your now back-to-back -back winner in the Super Late Models. Christian Peterson takes the checkered flag in the Thunder Valley 200. Christian, as always, thanks for sticking around and chatting. Congratulations once again. Uh, we're starting to make this a regular thing on Wednesday nights. Maybe we will talk again in three weeks. Yeah, I hope so. Thanks, Evan.
But the 23 ends up on top, but even he'll admit it, that car was just fast at the end of this thing to the tune of two and a half seconds. He's your winner tonight from Bristol. Cody McCauley was the driver who looked like and probably thought through the opening three quarters of this thing that it was all his the 62 was good just not good enough to beat the 23 but it is still a fantastic p2 result and track side with him is cool yeah, right here with the 62 of cody mccauley cody you were absolutely on fire at the beginning of the race uh led the first lap no, despite not being on the pole and then just had it for a really long time and then had a long green flag run uh, as that long green flag run and all of a sudden the 23 started coming up the field and uh even though despite the caution coming out it seemed that that 23 had something that no one else had what what was the difference between the 62 the 23 uh and anyone else out there in the field tonight Oh man, the twenty three was definitely hooked up. You know, we uh we had we we had a really really good piece tonight, and I uh, everybody back at the shop re really did a great job putting this in together. We led a bunch of laps, you know, in our comeback race, and we were fortunate. But uh you know, being out front, we just got forced to use tires up a little faster than everybody else did, and Peterson ran a little smarter race. Uh, there at the end, you just you, you can't beat you can't outrun good tires. It just it's part of it. Now for you and uh, the race for you, the basically getting up to that point, it seemed like no one was really touching you and you said that you had a good car. Was it just really uh, comfortable, really, really stable out there for you and you guys uh, for the, those opening laps? Absolutely. Um, we, like I said, we had a really good piece. Um, it just, it kind of worked out where we were playing with the brake bias as a driver in the car, trying to get the car to not get real, real free on us. It's something you really fight at a racetrack like this. And I uh, ended up getting a tick snug and, and using up a lot of tires. But, you know, we learned a lot and we look forward to coming back here next season. Yeah, and talking about you, it's it has been uh, since last season, since I've seen you out there, uh, and now we're seeing you here on the second season of this, uh, and coming back in a good fashion, you know, getting second place. Um, anything in particular you're going to do this season, maybe a little different? It uh, doesn't look like a championship. It looks like it's going to be anything for you at this point, unless something uh, large and drastic happens. But uh, anything that you're particularly looking for between now and the end of the season? Oh, definitely looking for our first win. You know, we uh, we we've run really, really well both last season and and looks like starting off this season with the second place tonight. But uh, we st you know still been eluded that first victory. So you know, overall goal is try to get in victory lane. Sounds like a decent plan here for you guys and a good goal as the season continues. But before we let you go, we do want to give you a chance to give shout out sponsors to anyone who makes it happen for you on that sixty two machine. Oh, absolutely. Everybody at PruittTeam.com, and they do an amazing job giving us the funding to get these cars put together every week. You know, a special shout out to Troy Lent for spotting for me tonight and being on the pit box. He did a hell of a job. Um, you know, just really proud of the team. Scott Austin putting the car together. I, I tell you, if you guys get a chance to look at that car, that's a sharp looking paint scheme he, he put together. And uh, John Allett and Mike Connerelli, we, uh, we worked on this, this setup all week long, and I really felt like we had a solid car. Um, very, very excited to see what the season holds as we continue. There you have it, a positive Cody McCauley going into the fourth race. After this one's over, they'll go to Kentucky for the Legends Oval, and we'll talk to you maybe there or sooner and later. There is your driver, 62, Cody McCauley, and then down for third place, it's going to be Matt Cucker, and it's going to be joined by James Pike. Driver of that number 69 car, Matt Cucker, who comes home third this evening. And Matt, I think you just spent a lot of time in that pack from about third on fifth. And there were a lot of drivers that came and went, but uh, you just spent the whole night fighting, it seemed like. Talk about what it was like from your perspective. Uh, I mean, I, I tightened the car up again, just like I did in late mile stock race. And uh, this time I tightened it up way too much. I was a little bit too tight, and I just couldn't do nothing with the car. I just had to run one groove. I tried to go down bottom later on in the race and try to run where uh, Christian was running, and I just couldn't. It would just push up towards the wall coming off. So I just had to go back to the top and uh, let it roll. And hope I'm glad nobody behind me was coming so I could just sit there in third, and we'll take it. I mean, for not really liking the track, I got one win and a third. We'll take it. In talking to you tonight, I, I get the impression that especially when we consider the battle here at the top of the standings with Christian, that uh, this was one of those tracks where you just kind of wanted to slide on by and maybe uh, set your sights and target another track here in the schedule, maybe a, a Kentucky or a, 
Martinsville or Concord is a place where you might try and get it done. Uh, how do you feel like that battle shapes up between you two as we get ready to head into the summer race? I, the, my biggest, my biggest thing that I'm scared of is is uh, the point is the qualifying for the three extra points if you get the pole for qualifying. And I'm not a hot lapper. I never was, and I I'm not that good at it. And CP can qualify up front every time. So that's my biggest thing. Is I think from here on out we're okay with the tracks. So I think I'm really good at. I mean, it's just. The Bristol I knew was going to be a hard one, and before that, I mean, we were lucky at Thompson last week, or two weeks ago, but we'll see how it goes the rest of the way. I mean, I hopefully I can beat them the rest, and uh, it's going to be a fight. Going to be an interesting fight here, and we'll see you get gathered back up and see you at the Kentucky Legends Oval in a few weeks. But before we do, sponsors, shout out, friends, family, people that make it happen for you. Who do you need to thank on that number 69 team? Uh, team Vince here, once again, Jeremy. Adams, um, Globalcom, I analyze, uh, Kamikaze Webworks, Rowdy's Wraps and Designs, all of them. Without them, it wouldn't make it possible to race. Uh, I also got to thank LSR TV for broadcasting and then Kyle Barnes for putting it on. It's been a blast. Hopefully, it will stay that way the rest of the weeks to come. Many thanks for the time, Matt. We'll see you in Kentucky. We'll be there. So there's your top three finishers. And at this point, we get ready to turn our attention to the Legends Oval at Kentucky in three weeks time, which is actually the most similar track on the sim to Anderson Motor Speedway, which, if you're keeping count, is also the next destination for the Real Life Cars Tour. They'll be there on the second Saturday of June the 10th for their combo show with the Southern Super Series, a clash of late model racing that spans all the way from Alabama up to Virginia will be gathered in Anderson, South Carolina. So definitely want to check that out on carstour.tv if you can't make the race, as you can find us when we broadcast our Cars eSport Tour races, or better yet, make it out to Anderson in person. Come see the show. Yours truly will be there as well a whole host of other car store regulars and should be a really really fun show there and then in a few days time when we get to kentucky for the esport tour as well and i have to say Coop, we've been doing this for quite some time on lsr tv diaries live here i'm not sure if we have ever seen a legends oval race at a one and a half miler here and this is i'm talking four or five years of doing this stuff so there is no doubt that you are not going to want to miss that one it should definitely be exciting yeah, four or five years, one and a half on me, and then almost half a year now for Pike, and I don't think any of us have ever done a Legends Oval. And I've done my fair share of racing with these guys, as a lot of people know, and uh, we have done this, uh, this uh, Legends Oval before in these cars, and what they were really looking for at this one was to have no banking on the front stretch, and that's exactly what this one uh, pans out to be, so it'll be just as flat as you can imagine no banking on the front no banking on the back just pure uh pure racing is what i say we're gonna see but it's gonna be very hectic a lot of cars are gonna be uh, smashing into each other but the good thing about these guys is there isn't that many of them out there there's not like there's 30 of them where if you have a mistake you're gonna get lapped there's about 15 of them on average now and a small mistake will get you to the back pretty quick but if anything happens to you and you're not very happy with it, you could dish it back very quickly. Some of our regularly scheduled programming is off for the next couple of days, but we hope that you do join us this Saturday night with the United Sim Race at BNC Lana Landscaping Truck Series is in action. Schedule going to be a little bit spotty for next week. A lot of series off for the Memorial Day weekend. We hope you enjoy that, but you can find our full broadcast schedule so you know just when you can find us next time on our website at www.livesimracing.com. Also encourage you to stay up to date with us on the socials. You could give us a follow on Twitter at LSR TV, and you could also like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash LSR TV official. Until next time, that wraps things up here tonight from the Bristol Motor Speedway on behalf of the entire team at Live Sim Race at LLC for the folks behind the scenes, and of course, for the crew top sign tonight. For myself, Evan Pasoko, Austin Coop, James Pike, and our producer, Cisco Scaramuza, want to congratulate our winners tonight, Matt Cocker and Christian Peterson. Both of them 
picking up back-to-back -back wins in their respective series. One extra week off until we are back on Wednesday evenings. It'll be the 14th of June from the Kentucky Speedway Legends Oval, a first at LSR TV history. You were not going to want to miss that one. That race and every race of this 2017 Cars Esport Tour can be found right here at LSR TV, the voice of sim racing.